It's finally happened. Russia has deployed their Satan 2 missile for combat duty. That's it. I don't know what it means, but I tell you, when it comes to historical major events, they are often, it's often incremental. When we look back on history, we won't count the days from when the war started to when Russia deployed one of the most powerful nuclear weapons known to man, and then how long it took until they activated, detonated it, and actually wiped out a military target. For now, we are standing in the middle of the forest, wondering where it is, because all we can see is the trees. And I don't know, uh, perhaps they, they activate this bomb, the Satan 2. I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, this is, this is a tsunami bomb, right? I want to make sure I have this the tsunami bomb. It blows up on the, on, the, on the coast and then sends a massive wave, you know, uh, over these cities or whatever. They've deployed it and uh, tensions are escalating. So we'll talk about that. We've got a few other stories, but we might actually just wing it and have a relaxed Friday because we have a lot of other things to talk about, a bit more profound questions. Before we get started, my friends, if you go to TimCast.com and go to the menu bar, you can click TimCast IRL X Miami and pick up your tickets to hang out with us live in Miami. I know we got some announcements. If you have a ticket, you will get to watch a show with Tim Poole, Patrick Bet David, Donald Trump Jr., Matt Gates, and Luke Rutkowski, as well as Ian Crossland, as per usual. And uh, we're going to have a pre-show. We're going to have an after show. The show is sponsored by Public Square. We're huge fans. Download their app. And I can announce preliminarily, is that the right word? Yes. For elite members of TimCast, that mm -hmm. means if you're a member of TimCast at 100 bucks a month or more, there is a VIP elite member meetup at 3 p.m. that day. Location to be disclosed closer to the time of the event. So this is going to be, if you have a ticket and are an elite member, you are going to get a special event on top, which we are not going to announce where it will be and what it's going to be until we get closer to this date for security reasons. It's going to be much smaller, more of a hangout, maybe like a private dinner. It's going to be really awesome. So for those of you that have uh, uh, been our elite members supporting us and being involved, look forward to that information. If you are down in Miami and you're coming to the show, we got you. Also, head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member to support us directly. It is but 10 bucks a month to get access to our uncensored members only show archive. We have, I think, uh, probably several hundred now different videos and interviews uncensored with various personalities. And as of recent calls with you, our members. So if you guys ever miss one of our uncensored episodes or if you like watching the podcast after it's live, you can still watch all of the uncensored shows in our library. Plus, as a member, you get access to a bunch of other awesome uh, behind the scenes content. And we got documentaries. We're a bit delayed on the uh, uh, infringed documentary with Lauren Southern due to uh, legal reasons, unfortunately. But uh, Game of Money is available on, on TimCast.com. We've got more projects in the works. And I'll just tell you this. When you become a member, you are helping us make more documentaries, make, launch new shows, and invest in the culture. So as a member, you make all of this possible and more. And if you think we do a good job and you want us to win, sign up today at TimCast.com. Also, smash that like button. And very simply, if you don't want to be a member, if you don't want to do anything, there's one thing you can do. It's just share this show every time you can. That's the most powerful advertising. Imagine if everybody who watched this show shared it on social media. That's a, a tremendous amount of marketing value, and it really does help. You, uh, uh, well, I'll wrap it up there. Joining us today to talk about this and so much more is Jimmy Corsetti. Tim, thank you so much for having me on. Phil, Ian, Serge, it's, it's absolute pleasure. I've been following you for a long time. You're killing it. And uh, I'm a we got some topics we got to nail tonight. Who are you? What do you do? Well, my name is Jimmy Corsetti. I have a YouTube channel called Bright Insight. It mostly focuses on the mysteries of lost ancient human civilizations and various conspiracies. And uh, a lot of people know me as the Atlantis guy because there's a site in the northwest corner of the Sahara Desert called the Rishat Structure or the Eye of the Sahara. And it's kind of taken the internet by storm in that it matches more than a dozen striking similarities to what Plato had described as a lost capital city of Atlantis. So that's how many people know me. Um, however, I will say that with your show and the discussion of politics and current events, if there's anything I've learned through my studies of history is that uh, it seems that it's repeating itself. And now more than ever, people need to be paying attention, studying history. And it doesn't have to necessarily go as far back as the ancients, but I will say, whether well, it's from the Romans and the Greeks and how those massive empires had fallen apart, there are, I regret to say, some similarities happening right in front of us. So people need to be paying attention because history often repeats itself. It's not a cliche saying. It's just that human behavior is very predictable when you look at it on uh, a vast timeline. I have, so. a I have a very clever news segue for uh, the news topic into your 
discussion. The tsunami bomb? Yeah, well, you got Russia deploying this nuclear weapon. And you've got people being like, no, 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 talk more about the, uh, the, 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 you know, the ancient techniques, the Atlantis and stuff. And it's like, very simply, we can't open that door when we discuss nuclear war and the conspiracy that aliens came and deactivated nuclear weapons during the Cold War. You know about that one, right? Uh, that they showed up at the missile silos and, and then hit the off all, button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll save it. I'll save it. But there's funny stuff. So thanks for hanging out, man. It's going to be a blast. We got Phil Labonte. How you doing, everybody? My name is Phil Labonte, lead singer of the heavy metal band All That Remains, anti-communist and counter-revolutionary. And Ian. I'm Ian Cross. And what's up? Thank you, Phil. Hey, guys, when you go to TimCast.com and sign up, check out Cast Castle over on the left, especially uh, Heavy Wager, the most recent episode. I think we did a really good job with it. And I'd love to get your feedback and hope you enjoy it. Also, Aaron Heimer, the episode before, it goes on and on. But take a look at Cast Castle if you haven't seen it yet. We do a lot of work with it. It's really fun. Serge. Ian, what's yeah. up? Hi, guys. I'm here for Kellen because he was here all week. Nice to see you again. Let's get into it, Tim. Here we go from TimCast.com. Russia activates world's most powerful nuke. The Satan II missile is 1,000 times stronger than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and could destroy the UK in six minutes. Now, I want to slow down there a minute, and the most powerful nuke, there's a variety of reasons why it's described that way, but I think it's fair to say that there is a, a diminishing return on the power of the nuclear weapons we currently have, and it's because, uh, you know, I, I love Moore's Law. You guys are familiar with Moore's Law, right? Mm -hmm. That, they, you know, every two years, the processing power doubles or whatever, yeah. and then eventually got to the point where they were like, no, it's officially going to stop, but then they did multi-core processors, so they figured out a way that make the law technically keep going. That's the thing with nuclear weapons. It got to the point where we had these very, very powerful nukes. We had SAR Bomba. And then eventually someone was like, I got an idea. Let's just put 12 nukes in one rocket. And now we've got something substantially more powerful. And it's like, okay, well, there you go. So for this one, it is powerful. But we've got nukes that are 1,000 to 1,250 times more powerful than the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Satan II missile, while massive and extremely powerful, standing at 100 feet high, nearly unstoppable, is one of, I would say, in my opinion, not that I'm a combat expert or anything, one of the most powerful uh, nuclear weapons. It's being deployed into combat duty. And now I already know a lot of people, uh, we've got one super chat from uh, Tim Jake saying that it's standard replacement of obsolete equipment and things like that. Some people are saying, oh, don't be so dramatic. Here's why I think this is, uh, there's, there's a reason we bring this up. I think I have the story right here from the AP. Ukrainian drones strike deep in Russian territory, Moscow says, while a barrage in Kiev kills too. Vladimir Putin said they would not use nukes unless they were facing an existential threat. And now we are escalating to the point. Insider reported just the other day, two days ago, the ruble is failing. And now more Russians are cutting back on buying basic, fo uh, basic fo uh, goods like food and toothpaste. You've got this th several now military strikes in Russia. There was a military incursion into Russia from the Ukrainian side. And now Russia is deploying, whether it's a standard replacement or the activation of their most powerful weapon. We are escalating to that point. The most important thing to understand with this, this is reality. There is no point where someone comes and grabs you by the shoulders and screams, the nukes have been launched, it's happening now. Almost everything that happens is gradually and then suddenly, which means when we look back on history, a hundred years from now, when they look back, they're not going to teach young people, assuming there are people, I don't know. They're not going to teach them that, you know, in today's class, we're going to read about the two year for, for the next two years of school. We're going to be reading about the day to day, um, you know, monotony of the, the political uh, class and, and politics in these countries. No, they're going to say the date was November, you know, 17th, 2020. With Donald Trump now contesting the election, this led to the July 40, you know, the, the, the July uh, 15th, whatever. And then we saw one year later the deployment of the Satan II missile. Of course, two years after that, it was deployed and New York City was heavily damaged. That's how quickly it goes when you're when you're going through history. For us sitting here right now, understand this could be something. It could be nothing. I don't know. But this is how it will always be. Another grain of sand is added to the heap. Yeah. I have to say. When Russia activates one of the most powerful nuclear weapons that we've been fearing for some time, they've expressed the, the, the intent to use nuclear weapons in the event they face an existential threat. And now we are entering into war on Russian territory and a threat to their existence. We're a lot closer than we have been in a very, very long time to the use of nuclear weapons. Now, I am not saying they're going to nuke New York or anything like that, but New York did put out a PSA what was it like two years ago about yeah. what to do in the event of a nuclear strike? 
More importantly, keep your eyes open for an escalation of this war. Tucker Carlson warned that in order to stop Trump, they will declare hot war with Russia officially. I think the first thing we'll see is likely going to be tactical nuclear weapons on in the combat field, nuclear artillery. I do not think we're going to see the use of the Satan II missile on a civilian target like a city that serves little purpose other than to try and end the war outright. I don't think it would be effective uh, uh, this early on in the conflict, but I'm curious what you guys think. I think that the 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 fact that they've activated it um, has changed the game because there's, the United States is going to have some kind of reaction, right? The the Soviet Union is, or not Soviet Union, Russia is not going to be able to uh, to put a, a weapon like that into play and expect the United States to not do anything. So I imagine that there's going to be some kind of escalation. And again, it, it's not going to be like the U.S. is going to like just uh, start deploying nuclear weapons. But... I, I, and I don't know what it would be, but I don't think this is going to go unanswered. And it just goes back to what I've been saying, or what we've all kind of been agreeing on, is is I don't see the exit. I don't see the off-ramp. There's a lot of things that are happening, and there has been nothing at all since Russia invaded that has been even, that has moved the needle towards uh, a ceasefire, de-escalation, uh, ending combat activities. Nothing in two years now or or year and a half. So I still don't see the off ramp. Turning on nukes is what, you know, everyone's afraid of because Russia's nuclear armed. I I don't see how it gets fixed. There was uh, an attempt at a peace talk between, I think, Zelensky and Putin even early on. And and then uh, Boris Johnson went down there and ended the peace talks abruptly. And I think Victoria Nuland might have been involved. So essentially, Britain and and the United States were like, no, 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 no. Peace is not a good idea. We need this war. I don't know. uh, For a weapon system. Do you remember that? I don't know. Yeah, that was this is something that people mention a lot. Um, I don't have data to pull up right now on me and it's anecdotal. So I can't prove that that happened, but I've heard it a lot. So there is that would ins- at least, you know, that would at least explain that there are some people want that Zelensky doesn't want the war. I mean, I don't think Zelensky wants the fight. I don't think he wants the people to die. I don't think Zelensky's to- Zelensky's come right out and said <clears throat> that his goal is to totally just take back Crimea. Like yeah. Zelensky said that. Yeah. I, and so he's not. So it's not like he's not looking for any kind of de-escalation not, or whatever. But it, well, but it's not Zelensky. It's NATO. That's what I'm saying. It's it's Boris Johnson and Victoria Nuland pushing pushing Zelensky and probably will kill him if he doesn't play it. I don't all. think I don't think they're pushing him. I think they're playing him like a marionette. Man, I uh, it's. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 rough that uh that hey, they've look, completely devastated the Eastern Donbass, turned it into mud, and talk, all those people have died. I, I don't think anybody wants. And, that. and this is war. I mean, Russia's involved in this. They're the ones who who initiated it. I I, I find it absolutely hilarious. There's this really great post that said, you know, ways you know that you're a bootlicker for the empire, and it's that you completely ignore all of the things the United States and NATO did to escalate tensions, which resulted in this war. And if and if you bring it up, if someone brings it up, you get offended. And I'm like, right. <laughs> it, the, the, this politics is not happening in a vacuum. Russia didn't one day be like, you know, Vladimir Putin didn't twirl his mustache and say, "I'm going to be evil today." <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a fight over special interests, resources. They need the seaport. Right. They want Sevastopol. They want to fortify the roads down into Crimea through eastern Donbass, the east one, east ninety seven and mm-hmm. east one hundred five. Mm-hmm. Those two freeways. And, and if they and, can, if they can fortify that, and Russia can take that and solidify their base in Crimea. Uh, Sevastopol is the city. Yeah. They'll start pumping out oh. goods and services into the Mediterranean Sea, but that will create make Turkey mm. a vulnerability mm. for NATO because Turkey's in NATO. Ian, Ian if, I, I, I hope that you are ready to die so that NATO can defend Ukraine's mil- water, water port. <laughs> yeah, it's more that they don't want Russia to have it because then they think Russia and Turkey will buddy up and that Turkey will leave NATO and then they will NATO will fall apart. If Turkey leaves NATO, I mean, the, it's, it's, I, it's, I, I, str- I want to strongly push back on the idea that without Turkey, NATO falls apart. Well, it's that already kind of trash. That is completely the bigger risk. Just that idea is completely not true. I mean, and it, it's, and a, it's, it's a happen. nuclear power that and controls the Russia's access to the Mediterranean. I think if it's it's with, not just Russia's, they control the Bosphorus, which is all of the Black Sea yeah. into the Mediterranean. It's which is I don't know mostly Russian. It's Ukrainian also Ukrainian. So they could shut off Ukrainian access to, the, or some of it anyway. What's so wild about it is the hypocrisy. Because Putin's been saying, what, for 15 plus years, do not put NATO troops on my border or else. And I'm like, wh- how did we feel about it when the Cubans, or excuse me, when the Russian Soviet Union was putting missiles in Cuba? Yeah. Like, it's a no-go. And if they also, were 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just, there, I just want to say there is new nu- uh, Turkey does not have nuclear weapons. Are you sure? I'm looking at it right what? now. I looked it up. I googled it. So, and that's part of why we get so many countries in NATO. Is NATO exists partially to uh, limit proliferation of nuclear weapons. That's why you j- get com- countries to join NATO. We offer you protection. We have nuclear weapons. Don't develop nuclear weapons of your own. That was the whole point of the United States being like kind of the big dog in NATO and stuff is to prevent nuclear proliferation. Sorry for cutting you off. No, you're good. Um, Thank you. And you know, speaking of nukes, you know something we should entertain is the possibility of an EMP bomb. If people aren't familiar, there are devices, allegedly, that, and I don't doubt it, uh, that can take down entire power grids. And they're, they're, I'm pretty sure that's we know they exist. Right. Like a, a nuclear detonation releases an EMP intentionally. Right. I'm pretty sure we've isolated and we can generate an EMP. And, and the like last, a neutron bomb. Right. And the last several uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, heads have said that, you know, a grid down scenario is one of their, their number one con- concern because there's so many different things that could do it. It could be a solar flare. It could be bad actors. It could be a hack mm-hmm. job. And there's all these, if you look into this, there's been so many different um, uh, electrical grids or um, the uh, substations around the United States that have like had been mysteriously hacked and infiltrated by various hackers. It's like, who's doing that and why? Jimmy, have you ever read the, the book One Minute After? Yes, actually, okay. yeah, yeah. I got it on audiobook. That's I got a, a few of those. Book. It's a good book. Is, that, is that about after the nuclear? About after nuclear, nuclear, about an, uh, an EMP. They, so they shoot oh, an EMP dude. off over over the U.S., light it off about 100 miles up or whatever. The EMP takes out the entire grid. And it's based, I think, in North Carolina. I believe so. Correct? I think it's Asheville is the the, the area. But it talks about, you know, the, the things that could happen and stuff like that. Newt Gingrich actually wrote the foreword to one of the uh, editions. I'm not sure which one. So, But go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, hey, if you guys want a conspiracy... In between now and the next year, I'm convinced that there's going to be some sort of event. They're going to come at us with some sort of curveball. Like everyone, they're putting out COVID mandates into the media now. And I'm like, I think that there's a sizable uh, portion of the populace that will not comply. I don't know what the percentage is. Even if it's just one out of three, that's too many. And I don't think that they're going to pull it this time. I'm expecting a curveball. So what better, like if you study history and like Sun Tzu and the art of war. So instead of nuking us or doing a, a, a bomb off the coast to flood us, why not just turn off our lights? Let us destroy each other from within. Most people are not yep. prepared. Uh, but you know how most people would die if the grid goes down? Waterborne illness. Most people do not have sterile water. We take it for granted. You well, turn on the faucet and you're fine. I got. I got. I got to stop you right there. You, you said how most people would die. That might not. All right. Most might not be the word. A significant but number. Millions of people right. would die from 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 infection of going to the bathroom because they, they their stomachs can't handle you know that raw water that's going to turn once the water treatment facilities go down. So never mind percentages. Well, well, when, but like when the water treatment plants go down, there's no water at all. Right. So no. in places like New York and Chicago, you turn the faucet on and nothing comes out. And game over because how many what two days without water three days and you're and you're just incapacitated. I, w- I would say by day two people are drinking each other's blood. Yeah, I, you, I, I am not exaggerating. There was a, a martyr maid has this post about what civil war really is and what people don't understand, and I'm and it really is something we bring up all the time that people just it's like there's nothing you can do about the fact that people live in movie reality that mm-hmm. they don't think about what how the world actually works and so they imagine people marching with uniforms. Martyr Maiden and a couple other people had tweeted, civil war is like everything's, you know, you're, you're, uh, you know, the conflict is happening. You, you see it in the news. You go to bed, you go to bed and you don't wake up because an, a, a, a warring faction in three in the morning sneaks in your house, kills you in your sleep, takes your stuff. Or you wake up and your neighbor's house is on fire and you see him, his corpse lying on the, on, on the sidewalk because a warring faction came in and he was a target for some reason. These kinds of things are uh, are likely to happen first in a breakdown. So outside of the concept of civil war, right? Like let's let's not be too cliche with Tim Cast here. Let's say EMP bomb nuclear strike. Cyber attack. You know, uh, Rachel Maddow said they're going to shut off our electricity. They could with a cyber attack. Yeah, if our grid goes down, I think we I I if 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 communications go down, that's it. The fabric of the United States evaporates overnight. And you ever play the video game Fallout 3? Yes. I love Fallout 3. It's the best video game ever made. One of them. And uh, the Enclave. Let me give let me give everybody a general understanding. I, I assume most of you know Fallout 3. Some of you might not. In the Fallout series, uh, in like, what, 2077, China invades Alaska because there's dwindling fossil fuels and they need access to new resources. War breaks out. Nukes go flying. Planet gets bombarded and most people die. Uh, a large portion of people in the U.S. go into underground vaults to try and survive. In Fallout 3... Uh, I forgot where I was going with this. 
What, what it would be like, uh, you know, with uh, after the the fallout from it? I mean, yeah. just the, the complete societal collapse and everything else? Yeah, I forgot the point I was going to make because I started explaining the basic story. It was about, like, the Enclave and then you're oh, talking about, like, you got it. There it uh, is. communication. The yeah. remnants of yes. civilization. Yes, so uh, in Fallout 3, the bad guys are the Enclave. They're the U.S. government. But they are completely powerless uh, uh, and they have no control over what is the United States. So in, in the Fallout world, there's the New California Republic, which is the remnants of California are rebuilding and forming their own government. But the Enclave is actually the descendants of U.S. military, U.S. government that went into Mount Weather and other bunkers when the bombs fell. When they emerged, they had no way to control what was left. The wasteland. So the, the, yeah, the apocalyptia. So in the event communications go down, how does the military communicate? They, they've got contingencies, I'm sure. And they have protocol for what happens if the, the, the communications go down. But what about local police, federal law enforcement? It is there. There's going to be a decay, a breakdown as as uh, as you get out further and further outside of the government of actual communications. So what happens then if the grid goes down and communications are blocked for some reason? We lose the Internet. We, we lose electricity. We're turning our radios on trying to figure out what's going on. And then bad people go on the radio and say, this is Lieutenant so-and-so, I'm in charge of this area, and it's a random guy. Then he comes in and says, we're organizing. What if it's a militia? And they feel justified and, and say to themselves, if we don't get a hold of this, it's going to get bad. I'm taking charge. Put out a radio call, put on their militia uniforms, look like military, show up with guns. They're not bad guys, but they're not the government. And now you've got conflicted factions determining, trying to figure out who's in charge and who isn't. It would no. happen. It'd be a power vacuum. You Somebody would try to take it. You need like if you're in a city, you're doomed. Okay, so that I mean that we can take the you you can take like the you're idea doomed. of survival off the table. You're dead. You're a you are a walking corpse. So take if you live. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You're gonna if be you're, someone's lunch. You're, yeah, you're you're yeah. totally doomed. You have like if you're on Manhattan, you're doomed. You're never gonna get off the island. If you're on Long Island, you're doomed. You're never getting off there. If you're in Southern Connecticut, you're gonna die. If you're in Jersey, you're gonna die. There's like well, well to be fair, pointing out like. Jer if five percent live, I'm generally right. Is kind of my point, you know. Right, but but you know, for for Jersey, so long as you're not in the peninsula, right? If you're on the islands, Manhattan, Long Island, the New Jersey Peninsula, you're done. Yeah. When when we were in we were in New Jersey when the COVID lockdown started, and there were rumors going around they were going to shut down the bridge. Connecticut already had checkpoints with New York because New Yorkers were fleeing to Connecticut. So when we heard that they were like, that's what everyone was afraid of. They were like, hey, if they, if they lock that down. You're stuck. You ain't going anywhere. You're on a peninsula. So we were like, we should probably leave now. And so we packed up and we we, we came down to uh, where we are now earlier than we, we intended. And that was just the lockdown scare. But uh, to your point, in terms of the the land, uh, areas that have, have access to the larger mass the United States have a substantially, substantially higher chance of survival. Manhattan Island? Good luck. Doomed. You're dead. You're not. Look, you're look, not, look, look like, at you Maui. Should, you look should, at Lahaina. Yeah. The police block the one road out. Your best bet is to know your sheriffs and your local law enforcement, or at least be familiar with them. So that way you have an idea of who might have authority in your area. But that ain't going to work if you're in a city with police, because police are not the same as sheriffs. Like they have, they have a different, uh, a different outlook and stuff. And Yo, authority is meaningless. Yeah. In, uh, Guns ha aren't. Have you, but that's where the authority yeah. will, be, will be drawn from. Have you guys seen uh, The Last of Us, the TV show? Uh, yeah, actually, I just started, uh, I just finished up that first season recently. Yeah, I like Very it. Very interesting. You, what people need to understand, there is no good or evil in a conflict. There is survival. And what's, what's going to happen is, dude, you're walking down the street. Let's say it's a month, two months after the, after the, the grid gets knocked out and there's chaos happening and there's conflict. There's people starting to rebuild communications. The U.S. government is still asserting its authority. But as you move further west and things get further and spread further and spread out, communications break down. Distance between cities increases. East Coast may be stable. West Coast will be increasingly unstable. So let's say it's several months later and you're walking down a road and you've got your you know rifle on your back and your water. And then you come across, you, you see in the distance there's some kind of settlement and you're like, well, let's go see uh, who's there. And then all of a sudden there's a bang and you're dead. In fact, you're dead before you even hear the sound. The people who live in that settlement aren't going to be like, oh, hey, look, a fellow walking yeah. towards us with a gun. That's let's, the thing uh, see about, what he has to say. about video games and this like fantasy of survival apocalypse genre and games like, dude, you get hit once you're dead. Everybody dies.
But, but it's, I mean, it's but it's not just there's that. There's no fun. It's that depending on the level of conflict, the assumption that you can walk up to any kind of settlement and they're going to be like, "Howdy, stranger! I couldn't help but notice your arm there." You want to come hang out? They're going to be they're they're either going to jump out from like they're going to come out from fortified positions you can't see them, pointing weapons at you, telling you to get on the ground. You're going to lose your weapons, you're going to lose everything, and if you're lucky, they'll turn you away and take all your stuff. Right, the, a loot drop. Right, but and maybe they won't kill you or maybe they just do it and think if you find out, if you want if if this person wants revenge, if this person tells someone where we are, we're done. Don't know, don't care. This idea that you know, everyone's going to be super nice to each other and rolling us together. Crazy, crazy talk. No, no. strangers will be looked at as enemy. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know who you could trust. And and by the way, like is is you know like the boom shot, you're dead. Uh, if you if you get hit in the arm or leg or whatever, you're just wounded. You're going to get infected and die like a week later uh, in a very terrible, <laughs> terrible way. Most likely you're going to bleed out because most people don't have tourniquets. Right. Like most people don't have first aid on them. Well, like you get into a gunfight, your friend gets shot, he dies because he bleeds out because you didn't put a tourniquet in your car. It's, it's, and I guarantee you don't have one in your car. But you have shoelaces. <laughs> a lot of people don't know to, how to use a tourniquet. Uh, right. Exactly. Let me let me let me tell you guys something really simple. A shoelace and a pen. Have a nice day. Google it. Figure it out. But I've got dudes are dead. But it, this is the look, look, look. I would I'd be willing to place a large wager that the majority of people who listen to this show have a substantially higher survival rate than the average person. And it's you have to be paying attention to what's going on in the world to watch a show like this. Mm -hmm. Yo, come on. Every you could be listening to Barstool. You could be talking about the World Series of Poker. You'd be talking about football yeah, or the fucking the, ball game, the drafts <laughs> or whatever. And and hey, man, do your thing. Do your thing. I got no beef. Enjoy your life. Be happy live laugh love whatever but my but when it comes to what's happening in the world maybe it all settles down maybe nothing bad happens you know uh there's there's a, there's, a, there's a big good cause for optimism in uh trump's current polling numbers economic numbers things are looking fairly positive that you know i genuinely believe that while trump is a is far from a perfect individual the trump path slowly winds things things down in fact uh, I don't know about conflict in the United States, but internationally, World War III nuclear bombs. It's the only one that actually might have an off-ramp. There is nothing right. coming out of the Democratic Party or the Democratic establishment or the Republican establishment that in any way indicates that there is an off-ramp for the conflict in Ukraine. But, it is, oh, we got to win, and that ain't happening. But if Trump does get elected, while that may avert us being wiped out nuclear hellfire, civil conflict in the United States is still a, a, large, a, a high possibility. There is a lot of turmoil coming in the next 10 years or possible in the but next 10 years. But I wanna, I wanna add really, really quick to everybody, just as an aside, download General Survival app. Like, I'm not, it's, it's not a proper noun, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's not proper. Google search, go to your Google Play Store, type in Survival app, download three of them. Also, some cool items are a CB radio, shortwave radio that you can talk into to communicate with someone if the grid goes down and you have solar power, and a life straw, Life Straw is the name of the company, but they basically, you can take dirty river water and drink it through this right, Life right Straw. Through, right in the river. You can yeah. stick the straw right in. And a a Baofeng UV5R is a is a is two-way radio. Yeah. Uh, UV, I think it's uh, VHS, definitely UHS, and they're like 25 bucks, and they are the most common radio going around. They're super easy to use. Get name. one. You can download, get them for super dirt cheap. Baofeng. I, I also want to say download, download the app called Picture This. Are you guys familiar UV with that one? Five R got it. That's the no. app where like you take a picture of it and it tells you what it is. Basically, Pic right? picture plants, this. Et cetera. Yep. Yeah. Picture this can take a picture. Uh, it takes a picture of uh, I believe it's plants. Yeah, I and think so. That and reminds me. Yeah, tells you if you can eat them. Yep. Buy hard copy books too, just in case there's yes, a situation with the grid. A survival book as well as a first aid book. And there are also books which just made me think of it. Is that depending what region you live in? For example, I'm in the I'm in Arizona. I'm in the Southwest, so I have a book that's literally edible plants of the American Southwest. Yep. And you can do it on any region you're in because, especially when it comes to first aid and other you know survival situations, you know if the internet's not available. All you have is a hard copy, and we take that stuff for granted. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You can also, also download the Ranger Handbook, which is a legit, the actual military range, like the U.S. Rangers. You can download their handbook, and that's got a lot of stuff in there. I just put a link to it on my Twitter. So account. here's what I here's, here's what I have to say. I think when it comes to people who watch this show, I think even down to the least skilled person, their survival their survival chance in a city is going to be triple or quadruple the average person, just because for one reason, they see it coming. You watch a news program like this, we say, hey, look, they just deployed for combat a massive nuclear weapon. Then when the news breaks that, you know, like, let's say Putin comes out and says, mark my words, we will fire this nuke if you don't stop. 
you're going to be sitting there being like, okay, well, I'm going to put my bug out bag together. And then when the, when the sirens go off, you grab your bag, you're out the door. Other people are standing around going, I wonder what's going on. You know, not to toot my own horn, but I was in Boise, Idaho when the COVID pandemic, uh, alleged pandemic, uh, kicked off. And <laughs> I remember seeing national news about the Costco in my in my area was running out of toilet paper. This is in January of 2020, before when everyone knew it was nonsense. Right. And it may have been as silly as it was for people to stock up on toilet paper. I saw what was going on. I'm like, well, I'm not going to be last. So I went and stocked up. And guess what? I had Charmin, Top Shelf, the excellent stuff, Ooh. sustained me through the entire <laughs> Did you resell it for a profit? Multiply, quilted? <laughs> It, it was Premium the quilted. Uh, I did not resell. I'm not, you know. He's like, he's, 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 he's in a dark alley in a trench coat and he like opens it I up. And you, so you got it? You got that good stuff? <laughs> Woo. Like, Give me like, another I, one. I, I did quilted, man. Break I, I just, me up I another square, man. I saw a funny picture going around where it was uh, the Purell, the, the hand sand. Someone had like a little baggie of it, like as if it was cracking. <laughs> and it said, hey, yo, uh, text me, get at me. I got that good old pur Purell. I stopped at a <laughs> gas station. I think it was in Arizona. And uh, nobody was wearing masks. I walked in the gas because like it's the middle of nowhere and she's like, oh, we don't care. They have yep. mandates out here, but ain't no one going to enforce it. And then I says, oh, what do you think? Are you guys worried? I hear that they're running out of toilet paper everywhere. And she's like, Tah! like we're preppers. I got three months with the toilet paper in my storage in my storage uh, area. Like we didn't even think twice about it. When all this stuff started happening, we just put our feet up and started laughing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. man, the preppers, they're having a good time right now. Yeah. Everybody that, or not everybody, but I, I imagine there's a significant portion of the, the listener uh, and viewers of, of the podcast here that have taken some precautions or some steps to, you know, do some type of prepping. Um, if you haven't, you're, it's a good idea. It's not a bad idea. So. And, and let me, let me add to, uh, for political reasons, downloading Wikipedia makes no sense. That is to say, if you were to download the entirety of Wikipedia because you wanted to learn about Newt Gingrich, yeah, you're wasting your time. Maybe go to ar go to archive it and from five but, years or ten years ago and download it. But but I recommend everyone download the full uh, text of Wikipedia because there's you if you ignore the politics, being able to read about chemical composition, drugs, mm. yeah, there, there's there's really basic stuff in there that's life saving in the event of uh, you know like an, an encyclopedia that large. Look, if the world ends, you're not going to be looking up Newt Gingrich. You're going to be looking up, you know, uh, like North American plants. I have them. And Wikipedia will actually create categories where you can, it'll be like, you know, uh, edible fruits native to North America. And you can click it and you'll see all these things and they'll have, uh, they'll have pictures. I, have I don't know if the pictures download with the full app, though. I've got this EMF protecting case that I put a solid state hard drive inside of that I wrap up and then put inside of a flame um, repellent safe. And that you can put like Wikipedia on like a, a solid state hard drive inside of an EMF protector, inside need, of a need, fire protected safe. You need more than that. That won't be enough. So uh, a buddy of mine actually has a Faraday cage, a high, a high quality, like government level certified for doing uh, uh, tests on cell networks and satellites and communications. And it does not block all EMF. It's it's like a shield that you walk inside and you see your cell service go all the way down. Does EMF fry solid state drive? I'm I'm fairly certain. Yeah, it it, it it's going to short out anything anything but, electronic, but yeah, solid state like circuitry. They're not yeah. magnetic. I know that. Magnetic but so drive. so that's not so much the issue. But with yeah. a Faraday cage, what you want to do is that EMF pr protector you got EMF yeah. case, a little Faraday bag, yeah. put it in a microwave. Microwave is a Faraday cage. So put it in a microwave and put it deep in your basement. And then if you really want to be serious, wrap it in tin foil, then put it in a bigger microwave. Because, you know, I was talking to my buddy and I said, he's got a Faraday cage. I said, you know, so are we, you put like a phone in there. So if a solar flare hits, you're good. And he was like, this thing's not going to protect that from a solar flare. Solar flare is going to fry whatever's inside of it. And I'm like, in the Faraday cage, like it's, yeah, it's, in, it's imperfect. It's, it's the, the, a, a, a solar flare or an EMP is going to be so powerful. It will get through there's going to be leakage and i'm like what if you put a microwave in the faraday cage and then put something okay now you're good right oh. you you double layer it and then the the faraday cage does provide protection but the idea that these things will protect you guaranteed is not true you what you want to do is get a car from the 60s yeah and then just a carburetor uh, yeah a yeah. non-fuel injection that's the key because all our, a lot of people don't realize all of your cars now every single one of them operates uh with a computer and if it's not a carbureted engine which none of them are anymore uh it will undoubtedly fry I, apparently, though, unless you're in like an underground parking garage, there might be a chance. I thought I read somewhere. I don't know if that's true. 
Um, but speaking of like, we were talking about prepping and in the context of like solar flares, a lot of people realize, cause I know this can be some people realizing everything will be fine. You know, it's like, but a solar flare could happen. There are natural right. events that are unforeseeable <laughs> that have nothing to do with, you know, uh, geopolitical, uh, you know, things going on in the world. And it's just a, you know, when I was growing up, uh, in, in, in Arizona, there's a, a large, um, LDS Mormon population and like, it's customary, uh, to have like three, four months of, of preps. And I remember thinking that was weird at the time. Now it's like, no, that is, that's wisdom. Three that's months. Yeah, that's, I think it was three or four months minimum, like of like food. And I, I don't know. I could be wrong. That should be everybody. That should yeah. be, that should be as, as simple and basic as, as it comes. You should be able to, to sustain yourself for at least a month by what you have in your house. Even if it's like not eating the best food, but you know, freeze dried stuff or whatever yeah. stuff that can give you calories so you can get through safe and ready meals.com. A not shout out, shout out. They, we we used to do reads for them a lot more often, but now we just basically re, re, we talk about cast brew, and you know when we started promoting our own coffee brand because we're opening this coffee shop, I was like, we're we're not doing these shout outs anymore. But we used to do periodic shout outs for safeandreadymeals.com, which is emergency food that lasts twenty five years. Now it's really funny because when I started promoting that, and I love telling the story, all these leftists started mocking and insulting me, being like, haha, what an idiot, what a loser, he's selling emergency food, and I'm like. It's really crazy because we all have first aid kits. We rarely use them. Mm. You are willing to get a first aid kit in the event you have a femoral bleed, but you're not willing to have food you can eat. You eat food every single day. When was the honest question? When was the last time you used a Band-Aid? Uh, a few weeks ago, I, I guess. Like seriously though? No, just on a band, like on my finger. Yeah, straight, what about you? Know, you? Like use the Band-Aid. Uh, an actual, I don't, I, I don't remember. I mean, if I had, if I got, if I cut my finger, I'll put one like Neosporin Maybe. on and stuff just so that way it heals faster. Yeah. I don't use band-aids. I, I uh, wash with soap and then let a marriage. I usually rub compress. dirt in it. Compress. I think mine might've been like five <laughs> months ago. Maybe it's over two years for me. Mm -hmm. I don't use them. We eat food every day. And mm -hmm. people are like, oh, you're dumb for having uh, food in the event of an emergency. <laughs> like, They're projecting their own insecurities deep down. They know like or, or, or these are the same people that ran out of toilet paper. I don't right, know. Right, and then w fought for it. Yeah. Would it yeah. be good to have like a giant tub of protein powder? I imagine you could it make expires. that last. Uh, yeah. What, like a year? You got a year Maybe, out of it? I'm not sure the date, but they have expir expiration dates. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there, there's ways to preserve protein. Like freeze dry it or something? I mean, beans. Beans yeah. and rice can be preserved for 25 years. We have bean, bean and rice buckets and those form a complete amino chain. Yeah. Just by uh, salt. Allegedly, you know, iodized salt um, and you can season and apparently we need iodine. I don't, I've heard different salt. things about that, but I bought but like 10 buckets of salt. It's so That's cheap. A good thing to have it is a hand. good investment yeah. as well as lighters, by the way. It's a random oh, thought. Lighter. Plasma lighters that can plug yes, in. Solar. I have a bunch of those Ooh. and then solar, solar panel, solar chargers that you can charge your lighter off of. I carry it around with me in my fanny pack. I guess the bigger question is, you know, what's the likelihood of anything actually happening? And that's that's where people refuse to take action. But I'll just tell you, would you rather be the guy who spent a little bit of money to have a bucket of food in your basement that you might have to eat in 25 years before it goes bad? Seriously, 25 years. Or do you want to be fighting with Agnes in a parking lot of Walmart for the last can of beans? <laughs> you know, it's the peace of mind. And the thing is, like, so I'm a prepper myself. And the thought going through my mind is like, knowing what I know, if let's imagine that the so-called event happened and somebody listening to us is like, they hadn't prepped. And then they wake up in the morning and the lights don't come back on. Can you imagine the overwhelming feeling of shame and guilt and that 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 regret of like, oh no, I could have just used my credit card. I could have bought this stuff. I could have, and I didn't. That would consume me knowing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's like, there's no excuse anymore. Oh, uh, New York's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a, a, a sight to behold. I don't mean that positive way. We have never in human history seen density to this level. We've seen great fires. We've seen war. There's the, the sacking of Richmond and what it's like when these cities are totally raised and in conflict and bolts are flying. World War II. But we have massively gained population in the past hundred years in, 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 in profound ways. If the grid goes down in New York, I was in New York when Sandy happened and it was already getting kind of scary. Mm. You had, I went to a bodega and there was a line out the door. They only allowed one person in at a time. There were two guys with like a, like a, a piece, a stick of, like a big piece of wood and a guy with like a crowbar guarding the store. They'd let you in, you'd walk in. And then I was like, I was like, how's it going to the clerk? And he was like, N anything perishable, you don't want to eat. All the stuff in the fridge is expired, but the canned stuff is good. And I was like, cool. And in the fridge, spoiled milk and cream and, and milk products. And uh, I took a Gatorade 
and like some crackers or whatever. And I was like, yo, this is nuts. it was it was dark in New York for like two days after that flood. You were the, you were there, yeah. like yeah, the the Lower East Side was we had no power for like what two weeks. Something like that. Yeah, maybe. I remember got two days quick, of though. really dark, like weird shit. Yep. Yeah. And and it, like the flood damage destroyed windows and knocked over bus stands. And that's just a hurricane. And then uh, you had um, the Rockaways were just. Yeah, that's where wiped, I lived. I lived out. in Far Rockaway. Well, after actually I moved there right after the right after the yeah. damage. And it was wrecked. The whole coastline yep. was wrecked. And uh, I went I actually took the train down to uh, document the relief work that was going on. And it was crazy to see like the 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 uh the boardwalks like ripped up just it's just houses destroyed when the lights go out in a city man it is another place it's not home it's dark and cold and fucking dangerous you do not want to be in a city in the dark it is terrifying hard pass and that's after like two days of it being dark i don't know after two weeks of it being dark you're going to see everything hey, lit on fire i've seen i am legend warm. So I, I am legend of <laughs> Will Smith in, in New York City and Manhattan. You ever see, you seen that movie? Yeah. You know, but but again, people watch these movies and then get these weird expectations of what things will be like. The the, what, the first thing you can do, for, the first thing I'll say is you cannot predict what it will be like. There's There are certain things we can say are likely and may happen, but imagine this. What is your daily routine? Okay. Imagine you wake up for your daily routine, no electricity. What's that like? I'm sure it's happened. The power's gone out. You woke up, there's no power. What did you do? Now imagine it's going to be that way for several days. If you live in a more rural area and you're on a well with an electric pump, how are you getting the water out of the ground if there's no electricity? Most people, I think out here, have backup means of electricity for that reason, solar, uh, diesel generators, gas generators, etc. But just that's one way to consider what it would be like. Now, the question I have for you that live in the suburbs, do you think your neighbors are smart? Because if the water stops a flowing and they can't figure it out, do you think that uh, Jimmy next door will let his 12-year-old daughter starve to death? Or do you think he would, let's just say, cause harm to others, including you, if it meant protecting his children? Jimmy will come by and knock on your door with a smile and ask if he can have some of your water rations that you don't have enough of, and you'll have to tell him no. And he'll leave with a smile. Maybe, maybe he won't be smiling as much when he leaves. The next time you see him, he won't be smiling. Yeah, he'll be crying. He'll kick your door in if you with can a gun, see him again. Yeah. With the gun pointed at you, and he'll say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, before yep. he puts one between your eyes. Yep. You know, it's far more likely, I think, when we're talking about all this doomsday stuff. I look at people like Klaus Schwab, and when he speaks, I think we need to listen at this point. And what was it, just two years ago, he was talking about if there was a cyber attack, it would be us in pal COVID with co pal in comparison. Anyways, so a, a financial attack so it doesn't necessarily attack the entire grid we still have electricity however it attacks the banking system and this could be their tactic to usher in the cbdc because a lot yeah. of people say like i'm not going to go along with that i'm not going to go along with that i'm like well unless you're starving and by the way when i look at all these these eighty seven thousand irs agents are they really hiring them to check like venmo uh transactions no. or is it possible that they once they come out with the cbdc they're going to make any other exchange of currency illegal dollar yeah. gold anything so what i got a, i got a simpler one for you mm. uh act of war or financial crisis results in deposits being wiped out let's say the grid goes down the economy collapses something akin to a lockdown the government says we can insure and we have insured your deposits we we, we have relief download fed fed bank from the play store and from the app store right now and enter in your name, your social security number, and your ID, and, sh and a picture of your ID, mm -hmm. and you will get transferred in, well, you know, uh, the the money from your account before it was we, before incident occurred. Mm -hmm. And what that does is, let's say there's a financial collapse. Let's say that there is a natural disaster or an act of war that disrupts the financial sector. The economy goes to chaos. Now they simply say, "Oh, your money's gone, but don't worry, we've got it right here for you at CBD, uh, CBDC app. Download it today." Tim, I think you're spot on, and I think this is what's going to happen: is that the way to do it isn't to force the that new system; it's to get us to beg for it. Once your someone's kids are three days without a meal, they'll please yep. give it to me. Fine, fine, and um, we'll figure something out later. We'll, uh, you know, we'll we'll get this sorted out. They're going to get them to 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 want it. That's what I fear is that that's what they'll do. They'll, they'll mess up the system. If you have any hope of staying off of that, you're going to need a whole lot of silver dimes. 
Yeah, I could imagine gray. a lot of people won't do it, and then it'll create know, a bullets. subclass. Well, I mean, obviously bullets, but the, but the silver dimes are just because they're I the, think the gray, like a gray gray market is where people are going to be avoiding it. So if you're if you are going to have the ability to stay off, you're going to need something that people will recognize as money, and silver I, coins would be that. I, I think it'll be nine millimeter. Oh, Say you think again? bullets themselves? I, I think nine millimeter will be currency. I, I totally no one's agree. Gonna, you, I, I gotta tell yeah, you, that man, should be the currency in you, Fallout. I've been saying that even, for a while. Even <laughs> right now, I don't care about silver. I get it. Silver has value. I have some silver. What I mean to say is, if someone comes to me right now and says, "Hey, I'll give you a piece of silver for uh, you know that slice of pizza," I'll be like, "Bro, I don't care. Like, th- what am right. I? Gonna, what am I going to do with that silver? I put it in my closet." Right. I understand that you can always. It's 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 like a it is a liquid asset sort of. You can take it somewhere and exchange it. You can get value for it. You can trade with it. It's not that easy. Yo, bullet I could use. And I, I'm totally with you. Because like in my mind, I'm like, I'm not convinced there won't be some crazy. It, I'm very curious to know what it's my life is going to be like when I'm at retirement age. You know, I feel like something will happen, whether it's a pole shift, whether it's some World War Three or whatever it is. And in my mind, I'm not certain that it won't come to the point where ammunition is currency and everyone honestly i'm an advocate i'm a second amendment advocate i think everyone it's about self-sustaining and you need to protect yourself because like look at hurricane katrina which isn't necessarily the best example but there was a few days there where the, it was ab you know total lawlessness and there was people that held down their neighborhoods by their own use of force and um so i don't know like anything can happen the unpredictable can happen if people can't uh, take care of themselves you should expect that no one else will Listen, and, and anyone that's listening that that is of a little on the young side that thinks it's silly the idea that a a bullet or whatever could be uh used as currency the reason we call a shot of whiskey a shot of whiskey is because that one ounce of whiskey was traded for 145 colt long in uh back in the old west is that what is that why it was a that's shot wild. Yeah, it was a shot because the, <laughs> it was one you could trade one round 145 colt 45 long colt usually wow. uh for uh uh, for a shot of whiskey yeah so wow you know there's a lot of stuff we can learn from the western times on those frontier days when it was you know when there was lawlessness and marauders and the, the cowboys which were Bro, a real gang what's that what's that show 1911 or whatever what, no not 1911 uh 1913 23 1923 23, okay, yeah. i don't even know the year the show is but uh uh no 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 18 what's the 18 one uh there's there's a couple of them it's like i think one is uh 1893 or something Ah uh, man, uh, what you're sh- telling me right now is that. don't make a show with the year as the name. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah seriously. Right. Come on, who knows what is it? Because uh, I watched it; it was awesome. Uh, I know what you're talking something. about. Yeah. Yo, that and it's it's like the Oregon Trail. Eighty-seven. Eighteen eighty-seven. Yeah, that's uh, what someone typed in chat. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I'm just going but Tim Welch. The 18, the yeah, they're like, we got to float the wagons across the river, and then like mm-hmm. you just see like a woman go ah, get washed away and die, <laughs> and it's like, well, so, she's dead. That's how it goes. Or when uh, like. Uh, Native Americans raid and just kill a bunch of people and it's like well they're dead yep. that's just what it was oh stub yep. my toe I guess I'll die for the record it's 1883 there you oh, go 1883 drama. Right. we're getting 1886 all sorts of yeah, years just Ian's right them. don't make a TV show with a year don't in its name it. people just throwing on 1776 it's just trolls <laughs> now no stop guys <laughs> but it's crazy that uh, yo, people just die all the time like non-stop yeah. you just die you die of a toothache yep Yeah. that's it because <laughs> it gets imagine? infected yeah, yeah right. the infection would kill you. Not goes in your blood, itself. you go septic, and then you're dead. Yep. Yep. And Dentist really, really miserable way as well. Oh, yeah. Hey, you mentioned pole shifts earlier. Yes. How connected are they to like human behavior, and where do they come from? Well, that's a very hard segue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Uh, about as vague as I asked. I don't know, but do you want to segue into that now? Sure. Because I'm, I'm burning. Uh, I honestly, so this is complete pseudoscience, but I look at how many animals, creatures, insects, birds, whales are on this planet that are completely connected to to the poles in their in their travels, and I do wonder. And this is again pseudoscience, but like. It seems like things are as crazy as ever and people are acting a bit strange. And I don't know if it's because this internet thing is causing us to go a little bit nuts as we're staring at the screens and not getting enough vitamin D. But I do wonder if it's having an effect on us. Um, And I should look, and if you give me a second, I'm gonna bring up a a certain verse from the Bible. I'm not some Bible thumper, but there's something in it that alludes to how the people are going to behave in the end times. Are you familiar with this? Yeah, I think someone cited it to us yesterday, actually. Really? Yeah, read it. Um, Well, there's a couple. So first of all, let let me start with this one. This is... um, Isaiah 520, uh, woe to those that call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, Whoa. who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And this is in the context of end times. Is this not the upside clown world Whoa. that we live in right now? Yes. Actually, now that you mention it like that, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm an agnostic, like not a religious guy at all. So Let me do Damn. one more. 2 Timothy 3. 
But understand this, in the last days, terrible times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, without the love of good, traitorous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, mm -hmm. having a form of godliness in themselves, but denying its power, turn away from these. Oh, that sounds like the left. Yeah, uh, y'all. Sounds like the worst <laughs> aspects of me when I'm letting myself, when I'm not controlling myself, I can, I find myself so, doing but, that shit. But so is there, a, uh, is, is it, is it um, explaining when we expect these things to it happen? It says or? in the end times and there, that is very, so that, that is so debatable. But in my mind, I'm like, what if there's these cycles of cataclysms? And the more I've been studying this, like, so it goes for me looking into like cosmic impacts, which I undoubtedly do believe happen. But the more I'm looking into details as far as yeah. sun cycles and geomagnetic pole shifts, I look at things like Elon Musk is talking about how you need to go down the rabbit hole of ice uh, ages. And I've looked into that. And if you look at like, certain things like such as the mini ice age which or the little ice age as it's called from the year 1300 to 1850 550 years of global cooling approximately two degrees celsius 3.6 degrees fahrenheit famine uh, around vast portions of the world reduction in livestock that's tied to solar cycles as well as the global or it's believed that's one of the speculated reasons but there's something else and i'll quickly say this the Roman warming period, as it's called, which was increased warmth in the Mediterranean all the way through the UK. And that was same thing, a two degree estimated three or Celsius, uh, Celsius or 3.6 degree Fahrenheit, where there was, you know, an abundance of vineyards, Roman vineyards in the UK. And it was warmth and it's tied to sun cycles. So my point is, is that like these things have happened. You never hear about in the context of climate change. Sorry, uh, go ahead, Tim. Uh, I just wanted to bring up a story as soon as Please. you finish your point. Oh, well, that's it. I think that these are things that are that need to be looked at. And then going back to like, you know, geomagnetic having an influence on us. I'm like, why would this, these people found it. And again, I'm not a Bible thumper, but people thousands of years ago wrote this down and thought it was incredibly important to preserve it. And it just gives me a weird feeling that when I see that this mirrors our society to a T and I don't want to sound Mr. Doomsday guy, but um, what if it's related to a geomagnetic pole shift reduction and in, in, I don't know. So we got this story from Pew Research. It's uh, almost a year old. It says about four in 10 U.S. adults believe humanity is living in the end times. Periods of catastrophe and anxiety, such as the pandemic, have historically led some people to anticipate the destruction of the world as we know it. The end times is near. Take a look at this. U.S. Protestants in evangelical and historically black traditions especially likely to believe humanity is living in the end of times. Among Christians, 49% say no, 47 yes. Protestants, 55 yes. Evangelical, 63 yes. Historically black, 76% say yes. Interesting, interestingly, Catholics, 70% say no. And uh, uh, among the black population, 68% say yes. Now, among all uh, U.S. adults, 58% say no, 39% say yes. But uh, you do the math on the bell curve and, uh, you know, where you think the people who are right are, are going to end do you, up. How many people they polled for this? Is that on there? Uh, let's see. Do they should they do normally say? These are really interesting numbers. Sometimes it doesn't it's like thirteen hundred. It's really yeah, disappointing. Exactly. Right. You know, <laughs> You're like we pulled two hundred and seventy people and extrapolated it to three hundred million. Oh, look at this! A slight majority of Americans believe Jesus will return to Earth one day. Well, the Christ energy is due for a return. I don't know if it has anything to do with Jesus Christ or not. It doesn't have the immediate number right up at top, and I'm not seeing. The number of those so what, pulled. What happens when people get desperate enough, when the cycle calls for it, someone like that will rise up and speak. And it's like, it comes out of you. It's not like you're not 10, Jesus. 10,000, 10,156 U.S. adults. That's a that, lot. That's a lot for a poll. That is a massive sample size. I don't think we're in the end of time. I don't wow. think that the, everything is going about to end, but I think we're at the end of a cycle. Like the internet has created the beginning of a new cycle. So we are now facing the end of the Yeah, old. like that, that song. It's the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Which is, I think, the year 2350 or something. Oh, so we're, we're, all, we're coming up on the dawn of Aquarius right now. And well, there you go. You want to know something like, so the 2012 apocalypse, you know, do you know that the actual word for the apocalypse is like, it, it's truth coming to light. It's an awakening. It's not like the sky's on fire. It's actually about things coming to knowledge. And what's wild is like, when you look at where you were, with a revelation, because it re reveals mm -hmm. it's truth coming to light. Yeah. Right. Anyways, just want to say that. Yeah. It's wild. Um, and... Do you guys want to hear some other scripture that talks oh, about potential yeah, pole shift? This, so this is wild. I've been going down this rabbit hole. And so, like, again, I was saying, I've been studying pole shifts. And, you know, as the science shows geomagnetic pole shifts. It's not that the Earth flips upside down. 
Um, it's just that the interior of the core transitions and can cause effects on Earth. But I am not convinced that there isn't a tumble. Um, and so listen to this scripture, Joshua 10, 13. It says, so the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies as it's written in the book of Joshua. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. Uh, uh, what? And let me do one more. And this is from the Quran, book 48. He who seeks repentance from the Lord, uh, or Allah, before the rising of the sun from the west, before the day of the uh, resurrection, Allah, uh, Allah turns him to his mercy. So it talks about the day where the sun rises in the west. Now, just to clarify, the actual, um, it's believed that that just has to do with when you pass away, you go into the west. So it's not talking about the earth. It is, what I'm trying to say is that I am, I know that the other side will say that's not a correct translation for it. But when I see that prior scripture from the Bible talking about the sun and the moon standing still, uh, and then I see this, it would mirror if there was a pole shift where the earth actually did a tilt some portion degree. So I'm just sharing this stuff because someone wrote this down a few thousand years ago and thought it was important to preserve it. I might not have the uh, correct translation. I'd love to see what the live chat says. Just share. Well, so this is interesting. Apocalypse to us in colloquial English means end of the world end of days it, it the literal translation is revelation yeah. quite mm. literally comes from the latin church revelation and that's really interesting 2012 time frame with the iphone like i know the iphone was born what 2008 but when you look at like the Seven. period of time when most everyone started getting a, a smartphone uh, in their hands yeah, market saturation yeah i talk about the mark of the beast all the time i talk yeah. about that that 2012 because in my end said it was the end of an era and the beginning mm -hmm. of a new age starting and at the beginning of that new age the yeah basically like everyone started having that, that smartphone and everyone was connected to the internet and everyone used the facebook every single day as opposed to being at their house and uh, you know look where we are now i guess I think the the Aquarius, the age of Aquarius is due to begin about 2600 CE, which is what, is CE the same thing as AD? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Common 2, era. They stopped doing AD because yeah. AD was religious. Head it's very offensive. <laughs> oh, okay. Very era. offensive. BCE before common era. It, it all makes sense. And I wonder is how much it of is it is BCE. Yeah, BCE before common era and common, common era. And it's all era. just, it's all the same thing as the Roman or what is Greco Roman is what they would call it. But it's just new names. So that way, you know, it doesn't offend and atheists or AD some means uh, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. Yep. And they used to actually say mm -hmm. the, the, 1653, the year of our Lord. Mm hmm. Crazy. Oh, wow. And now they say common era. Screw common that. Era. I wonder how much we of this. We say BC and AD here. Like, we're not <laughs> well, think about how ridiculous it is that they canceled time. Like, so, like 2000 yeah. BC, it's like, so that doesn't count. I, I'm stealing this joke from Louis C.K., but he made that joke. It's like, so 2,500 years ago is negative time. Sorry, Ian, we're going to Oh, like, uh, well, I don't know how much of this is like self-fulfilling prophecy style or if we're actually in the apocalypse if it like do you believe that the bible i mean I, you strike me more as an archaeologist than anything but like do you believe i don't know if you have to go to school to become a technical archaeologist is that the way it works I'm, let me just say i'm not an archaeologist i i am a independent researcher i went to school for business and communications religious studies i am just somebody that i i, I go down these rabbit holes and and i am i i look at what the they say on the so-called mainstream side i look at what the fringe says i look at what the conspiracy <laughs> theories uh theorists say and i kind of just think for myself i wonder if the bible actually portented what the future or if we're just kind of looking at it and like making it fulfilling the prophecy subconsciously or it could be well, that's an excellent question and sometimes it makes me wonder that us humans when i look at the works of the philosophers of old you know uh plato socrates aristotle and you look at if you just sit down and read their works i'm like they literally have the human condition down to a t so i i speculate that it's just the way we are and over time it's gonna get it, it just repeats itself and that you have the tyrants you have these weirdos that just want to control everybody else and it's just the same system goes on and on and again because that is the way the human brain is wired like Everyone at this table might not want to be king of the universe, but unfortunately, there are people that really get off on that. And I don't know why. I don't. It's not going to bring them any happiness. But this is just seemingly the way it just keeps going and going and going. I don't know. Do you see like a way to change it? Awakening. Um, I think that. Um, look, I would say probably psychedelics. I've had some moments where <laughs> I've had you know like it gives you that. It's about the ego death. You got to like, all right, say hippie, yeah. easy there. <laughs> No, I'm just um, but like, honestly, like, I think that maybe this is how it's supposed to work. Like, I, I am a believer that this is we are part of something very special. I believe in intelligent design. I think that this might be a big uh, this could be a big dream for all we know. I don't know. I think that maybe simulation. this is. Yeah. And so simulation would, would imply you don't have to call it God, but whatever it is, creator. And so right. I'm like, if that's the case, this could be maybe this is a test. Maybe the, this is supposed to be how it goes. The simul I have a problem with the simulation theory and the simulation theory that? is good entertainment. 
Yeah. yeah. This is a fun time, right? This is better than nothing, <laughs> it's right? The best. Not yeah, for yeah, some people, you know. dude. <laughs> the problem with the simulation theory is it only moves the the goal further away. It doesn't answer any questions. Mm-hmm. All it does is say, okay, well, our reality is a simulation. That means that there's another reality outside of ours. What made that? There's However, however, so, it may be that in base reality, it's not even a question, it's known. Possible. But possible. then so but then, the simulation's purpose could be what would what would human life be like without knowing? With so imagine this. Imagine we live in a simulation that was created quite literally to test the faith of people who aren't given definitive proof but are told to believe. Mm. Whereas in base reality, they quite literally have Jesus like come down and be like, Hey everybody, you know, here's the latest update from God and they're like, Oh, okay. It could be you know, this could be a big test just like that. And I I think it'd be smart for people. I like the way Dr. Jordan Peterson puts it that believe in something, even if it doesn't even exist, you're better off. And I think that people should operate as if they're being this will sound crazy to some people, but you should you should live your life like you're on the world stage, that the, the cosmos are watching and that what you do matters and that after your life, maybe there is a judgment, maybe there isn't, but I assure you that your life and the whole world would be a lot better if you operated that way. Yeah. A- act you know? like act like that I think that Peterson is on to something when he says you have to act like every Everything you do matters because if the things that you don't do don't matter what's your point of doing them like what's the reason for you to get out of bed what's the reason for you to do anything if the things you don't do actually don't matter and if they don't matter then and and if you can't find a reason that's where you find nihilism that's where you find mm. hopelessness that's why you find depression that's where you find all these negative things because people need a reason I've said this before I think that and this is just my personal opinion but I think that uh, religion is a psychological phenomenon that cannot be separated from human beings, which is why the government tends to supplant organized religions in atheist or agnostic societies, because human beings don't get the option of not having gods. You can, you can as yeah. an individual, not have one, but your society is going to orient itself towards something, whether it be a god or an ideal or whatever. And if that if, if what your society is organizing itself in uh, pointing itself towards is not productive for humans, if it's anti-human, you destroy your society. And we've seen multiple societies in human and you know, endless societies in human history be completely wiped off the earth. We have, there's plenty of of, you know, societies and civilizations that have gone the way of the dodo bird. And that's likely because they have their society organized improperly. It seems so, like empires so, uh, tend uh, to fall. I don't think there's an empire that's alive right now. Well, I want to. I want to. I want to ask you. And you'd say Britain is, but the king's the mockery. No, the U.S. is. So I want to. I want to ask you, Jimmy. There's a conspiracy theory that powerful interests around the world are manufacturing the end of days to force the return of Jesus. Have you ever heard this? I have not. That um, that the the idea is they're trying to implement the things described in the Bible, so that they make the prophecy come true intentionally. That gives me chills. Yeah. That's that's one of the re- like if you talk to people that really hate Christians and they want to call uh, people Nazis and stuff tend to be on the left. Uh, they say that uh, Christians and Republicans and stuff they they are pro Israel because they want to kick the Jews out. The whole reason that you, that that Christians but, are pro so Israel is because they want to get rid of the Jews and they, they, they need to have before. a place where they can send the Jews. Yeah. That's what the left thinks of. Uh, that's what they say because everything to them boils down to if you're not us, you're a Nazi. But so I, I, the, the general idea is it's true. all of these it's things true. that you're we're right, seeing right. with terms of the Great Reset, you will only think you'll be happy, the mark of the beast, mm. uh, like the way the internet is making people, as you described in that, you know, when you read that Bible quote, yeah. is being done by by plan. That's the conspiracy theory. All right. And real quick, when you say mark of the beast, I, I, there, I have another verse. It says that if you, you will not be able to trade in the marketplace unless you take the mark of the beast. Are you yep. familiar with this? So I'm I like, that's, that's the mark of the beast. CBDC. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> right? It's like, is that not what it would be? Because like, you're going to pay with this uh, digital currency. Everyone, at all. everyone will have to have the app to scan. Otherwise, you can't buy, buy, sell, or trade. And this is totally coming. Like, is it, is it, does anyone here at this table suspect that that's not happening? Isn't this exactly what oh, yeah, they absolutely. are saying? They, <laughs> yeah, that is, I think, Who central is they, currency, though. Is they, though? <laughs> <laughs> the world <laughs> economic it. form, which loves you. And by the way, there's no evidence they don't love you. There is no evidence. There's no evidence Bill Gates doesn't love you. There's no evidence Klaus Schwab doesn't love you. There is I no love, evidence. You know what I'm quoting? Like, there's no. no evidence. There is no evidence. Like with the, the I, elections I, and stuff. Yeah, just keep yeah, saying yeah. it. There's no evidence. Yeah. There's no evidence. I love how Bill Gates is constantly going like, there's just too many humans and we got to do something about it and, and, and make less of them. Yeah. And then everyone's like, that's a conspiracy theory. It's like dudes yeah. on stage at Ted saying it. What are you Giggling about it. Giggling. You mentioned psychic 
psychedelics might help people overcome this pattern and yeah. create a new pattern. I found that does help me personally create new patterns in my own thought processes. But like, it's something about when you said like ego death that made me think about flow state and this, mm. this state that scientists have been studying fervently in recent times where you, you quiet your frontal lobe, which is where your ego, your personality, your thoughts of me, I, it's in your frontal lobe. When you cool that down and don't have activity up there, you go into this flow state where and if you're creative you understand flow state probably you've you've probably experienced it at some point in, in your life i'm sure of it um and if when you're in that state you kind of have control not control of reality but you control it in a different way you interact with reality in a way where you're not like it's not happening around you you are it right i'm convinced that this is like when people say like they debate about choice like what what's his face what's that guy that talks about free will um that the He's a, what's his name? He's a, he's made a big case for it. Uh, Joe uh, Rogan Dawkins? Talks no, 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 no. He's, he, you see him around on the internet all the time. People look at the ca uh, comments. Talk about the guy who talks about free will. Um, you'll know his name. Sam Harris. Bingo. Yeah. Sam Harris. And I'm like, this is what debunks that. I don't believe that for a second. In fact, I think that it's extremely dangerous to make people think they don't have a choice. That is the, that's, that's a lie. That's the mm -hmm. devil. You yeah. always have a choice. I but, agree. but it, I, and the thing is, is that, I totally understand his argument that if you're born in a certain situation and raised a certain way, there is you can react with the reptilian brain so quickly. It's like you kind of didn't have a choice. But what you just described, I believe, is the way around that, which is that to take an objective objective step back and with that mitigating ego, to, so we now you realize you do have a choice and you don't have to act impulsively and you don't have to, you can actually choose to think. Um, I think that that telling people they don't have a choice is one of the most dangerous things I think it's the big scam. Yeah, talking about free will and uh, I guess you would say what's what's free will and determinism. I think is the what the two the two opposites. Well, I think that there is a form of determinism and that we're in this magnetic field being moved along magnetically with God. And they say, are you with God because you're moving with it? But then you can you have the free will to bend away from that and kind of step away from God's plan and create your own will and your own plan. And sometimes that can actually get God, it seems like, get God to go along with you and the rest of humanity to kind of change change course a little bit. And you've kind of recalibrated determinism for the entire species, I will, all I will, of reality. I, I got to push back on the magnetism portion of it, because if you were to say like the ether or something or this like intrinsic field or something that might be that, that might resonate more. Yeah, subatomic spin. But 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 what you're saying is 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 physics buzzwords to represent something that we can't understand. Then I'll stop using the word magnetism. It's too it's too big. Magnetism's but, too big. It's a much smaller process. What about right. gravity? No, no, but which but I think see, is a see, form of magnetism. No, That's but, what, but no, but my, a my, my issue, my issue with this is like we of small and limited mind have identified one fundamental force. Therefore, we will describe God as that, and that's like. That, that's just, I right. think, a bad idea. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's more about the way the universe moves. Give which, it its own word if you have to. This, like, spin. Un unknowing. No, because spin is also a very quantifiable and tangible sign thing that we can we can study and yeah. replicate. A lot of the if, times... If you're trying to say that there's some kind of God field that that unites and bonds people to God, and it's 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 beyond, you know, our understanding, yeah. then I'm like, ah, uh, right, right, right. Some kind of, like some kind of field of energy like a Hig, the higgs field no field you're, you're of doing bosons. it again you're doing it again you're doing it again you're, well, doing it you're again. never going to be able to see it because it's always going to be smaller than what you can currently yeah, but see it's not size the, the, the point that he's making is these are all phenomena you talk about phenomenon that we can study and that we're familiar with you talk about vibra vibrations a lot vibrations are kinetic energy we understand kinetic energy you talk about electromagnetism electromagnetism is is the, one of the four fundamental uh, forces of the universe. We understand that pretty well. The only, the thing we don't really understand is gravity. So fair enough. We don't know where gravity comes from, but the strong force idea. that we, yeah, but it's, it's, time. it's less, it's less understood it's than a, the strong force. It's, than it's the a weak. pushing force. Right. Essentially. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it's gravity. It it's a bends, pushing force. Bends, it's not pulling. It bends space. It's not a pushing yeah, force. It, it is bends, pushing. Yeah. You're being it, pushed towards earth, which is no, yeah, no, 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 no. He, he, he's, he's right. He's right. It's put, no, you're traveling so, through a straight line through space, through curved space. Space itself is bent by massive objects. So that's why, that's why like, like a, a, a black hole, you can't get out because the curvature of space is so much that you can't travel fast enough to get out of it. You can, the, the speed of light is, is, is faster or is, is slower than the speed you need to go to get out of that curvature. Mass makes the field that we exist in, the three dimensions, up, down, left, right, forward, back. Mass makes the field we exist in curve, it bend. That's what gravity is. But 
the strong force, the force that keeps uh, subatomic particles together, the weak force, and and electromagnetic uh, the electromagnetic force. These are things that we understand really well. So if you're talking about a new force or a force that's unrelated to these, that's fine. But when you use forces that we can study and that that have been studied for decades and decades and decades and stuff, you you tend to miss. The, you, you're not making uh, the connection that you that you're trying to make. You know what I mean? Because you're using things that we can relate to already that we have have experience with and can and test and stuff like that. Is is I think what what Tim's trying to say. Yeah, but basically it's like imagine if you know an indigenous tribe of people were like the sun is God and we're all connected by the warmth of the sun. It's like we know that's not true. We know the sun sunlight is an electromagnetic frequency that is coming from this gigantic fusion reactant reaction. And so if you're trying to say that there is an, uh, a, a, an energy, a spiritual energy we, we can't, un we don't understand, call it that. But saying magnetism is like me saying this clicker remote control is what connects us to God. Like, no, that's one small yeah. thing we've identified. Maybe it's like the way, see, this is word again, vibration. We're just, I mean, we don't have the tools the, the, to measure this stuff, but, but something's that's cracking, saying, like say, photons again, are appearing like, out of the um, every time you Higgs say field. Every time you say vibration or Higgs or whatever, all you're doing is like picking up a rock that we found and claiming that's God. All I can do is talk about bosons and fermions, the subatomic spin right now. We don't have the tools to, to see smaller than that. But... But do you, so you can talk about them, but do you know why you're talking about them? Because do you know what's, what do you understand the things that you're talking about? The way they're spinning is determining whether or not they become protons or neutrons or electrons. And then, and it also determines where they're going to appear in reality. And like, when we look at reality, we think of it as moving across, but it's actually appearing in place over appearing in place consistently in a new position over and over and over again. You're not actually moving. You're appearing. You're constantly appearing in place in a new position. So um i think you can appear you can change the way you appear i don't and understand. more than just positionally like uh the but the way way is a vague term i don't i don't do you yeah. want to you want to hear a mind f to go along with talking yeah. about the sun and god real quick and we're talking about all this the the, the, the subatomic particles so something like 94 percent, or it could be 96 percent of all elements in existence emit from the sun give that a google something like uh, over 90 like 94 percent is what i recall of all elements in existence emit from the sun. Yeah. No, 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 Google no, no. it. Yeah. But but you've got to clarify what that means. You mean that it is stardust. We yeah. are made right, quite right, right, right. stardust. Stardust fusion reactions within stars mm -hmm. create elements. Yes. Yeah. Right. And not it, not the sun. The sun is a microscopic component of, of reality. Right? The sun is one star. of many generators that are producing up to ninety four percent of all matter. Apparently matter. all matter that exists came mm -hmm. From is it constantly being emitted from suns and exploded right, supernovas yeah, from stars, around the cosmos. Stars, from stars. But there's six percent yeah. of it that's not coming from stars. They that might not even be the case. It, it, maybe it is, and it they don't realize be. it. But I know that the, these elements also come from um, deep sea uh, heat vents. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about, like superheated vents. They're finding that the the building blocks of life are being emitted to from that, which is unbelievable because we're talking about superheated we're talking about molten rock it's being emitted out of that so like when you think about the fact that we are quite literally made of stardust by definition and the fact that we're now sitting here talking about it is one of the biggest mind f's for me because i'm like what is this kind of creation to me that's evidence of intelligent design and not everyone listening is going to like that but i'm like that's kind of weird the fact that i can conscientiously choose to even discuss it and talk about it and present it is like the biggest that run really gets here's me. The, here's the sad reality around uh creationism intelligent design whether it's secular simulation or religious you know when you play a video game the video game might have stars in the sky but there mm. ain't nothing up there it's just a picture mm -hmm. and if we are in a simulation if we are in a created universe for our experience then space is just pictures it ain't nothing up there it's all down here and we're all alone just us yep. here for ourselves or at least that's all we can observe like i like to use the analogy of like an ant like you, so ants are very sophisticated and you drive by hundreds or thousands of ant hills every day and they have absolutely no concept whatsoever that there is somebody inside or even of a vehicle itself but somebody's in it going from to, to their job it's like beyond their even realm of comprehension so maybe it's that's like that's for humans comprehension right for sure right? our brains are so limited relative but to so, potential so this is this is great this is one of the answers to fermi's paradox uh for those that aren't familiar, I assume most of you are. It's if if the universe is so big and aliens uh, exist, why have have we not discovered intelligent alien life? It could be that we are ants next to a superhighway that we can't comprehend, and we look up at the stars, going, "Wow, I wonder what that does." 
Meanwhile, super advanced species, which are well beyond human comprehension, are zipping around multiple different dimensions and times and just like they don't care about us in much the same way that we don't care about ants. Yeah, I realized if when we I actually tweeted this out, when we master the communication, we can't hear the aliens will come. There's what does a, that mean? a body language. When you can speak, communicate with your thoughts, once, once the human race masters that ability, I think. Telepathy? Yeah. Just think words at people instead of saying them. You, you communicate with your body language that way. Do that right now to me and then see if I can get it. This is how you do it. That, <laughs> nothing, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm trying. I, I don't know. But what happens when you think of somebody and they call? You guys have had some pretty spectacular yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, secrecies. I've, we, we've <laughs> all had those moments where you grab your phone and then right when you turn it, right when you press like wake up, it's a, you answered a phone call at the exact moment and it's the person you wanted to call. Isn't that mm -hmm. wild, right? What yeah, is that? Is back, it just coincidence? Look, no, 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 I mean, I don't think. Hold on. Back in the day when we had landlines, this happened to me maybe three or four times in my life. I walk up to my phone to call my friend. I pick the phone up and there's no dial tone. And I'm like, what's going on? Then I hear some noise like, hello? And then my friend goes, hello? And then I'm like, uh, who it? Rick? And he's like, oh, oh yeah, I just, oh, oh, wow, I just called you. And I'm like, whoa, wait, what? Jaw dropping. I, I picked up the phone to call you right when he dialed the number. And on his end, it never rang. Mm -hmm. He dialed the number and I was instantly there on the phone. And he's like, huh? And for me, I pick my phone up and he's already on the phone. I'm like, <laughs> what just happened? And the crazy ones is when it's somebody you hadn't talked to in a long time. Maybe it's months, maybe it's a couple of years. And all of a sudden, like you get like an email or you get like a DM or a phone call or a text. Like, what's that about? What are the odds? Sometimes I wonder, like I've had these moments where I'm like, this goes beyond the realm of like coincidence. And, and sometimes it's on a day where something had happened that reminded me of them or I heard that song because like songs are an interesting way of taking you back in time. Like I could hear a song on the radio and be like, oh, I was in the seventh grade. I remember this because I was doing this with these buddies. You know what I'm talking about? And yeah. so I'm like, sometimes when things happen like that, it makes me like a believer. I'm like, this, there's, I don't know how we're all connected, if whether it's one consciousness or what, but sometimes I think that there's way more going on be behind the veil of the human have eyes. You, have you read about near-death experiences? Yeah. I, I, I've read, uh, I read this book a long time ago, like, 20 years ago now or like 18 years ago and it was talk like a lot people said a lot of the same things like they died they could see a bright light they felt warmed they felt like they were being lifted up and uh one book i read said a common theme was they felt like they were being pulled towards this very large ball of light but they could see other balls coming towards it as well and i'm wondering just a thought are we all small fr we, we we are all pieces of the universe obviously yeah but is it possible that the energy and consciousness within us is a fraction of the greater entity of consciousness? Gnosticism. And it has to when be. we die, we go back and rejoin. Concentric circles. That's all Gnosticism. Is That's that, the, is that the, what they the, think? Yeah, yeah. They, the no, Gnostics true. believe that God is the demiurge. God is actually Satan. And there is a God above God, which is the Gnostic God. They believe that that God has broken itself apart and it's in every living being and every every person and the goal of people is to realize that we are god no, and no, when no, we no. do that then we will uh i forget the phrase uh but we will become one with the uh the ultimate or one with the the and what if you don't do that do you like I don't know the whole detail. I don't know. It's, it's a, it's yeah, a religion. It's, come back. <laughs> it's a religion that I don't know a whole ton about, but I do know that Gnosticism believes that that the God that is worshipped, like the the uh, Judeo Christian God, an Islamic God, is a is actually the devil, and that the real wow. God is broken himself apart and is inhabiting My, all of us. And when we realize that we are God, then we will have like that will be actually yeah. be the beginning of time. Like My, time hasn't started yet. My religion is that when you die. You wake up in an arcade with your buddies. Playing take, Street Fighter Two. You take sick. you take off the headset and you were like, "Whoa, that was crazy!" Shit, Dal seems awesome, yeah. And I then it's like you know, you 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 die, and then next thing you know, you're sitting in an arcade. You take the helmet off, and then your buddies are like, "Dude, you were a rock star in a band called All That Remains." <laughs> <laughs> I, You're like, yeah, it was great. When you talk about God, this Gnostic God and how it's within all of us, I'm thinking about how there's this, a theory is about how the universe is like white holes and black holes and that the black holes are sucking matter in and then it's transporting it or transmitting it and it's bursting out of these white holes, which are stars. And then I wonder if hmm. we have white holes within our protons or within what's causing the subatomic spin to actually spin. What's gestating that, that momentum? Is it a white hole? Is it some sort of expulsive force that's being withdrawn through black holes? And is that God? coming out of us like bro you ever program a video game uh yeah well i used game maker so way uh, back in the day 
so for for a lot of people i'm not you know rpg maker i'm not so i'll, I'll say two things one in uh video games what they do now is only what's in your field of view is rendering and when you move it rapidly renders mm. the objects around right. saves memory and is easier to process but uh, when i used to do uh game maker stuff uh multimedia fusion flash if you are making a game let, let's say you're like uh uh what, what's it what's it galaga is yeah, that, yeah, is that where like your little spaceship and then the it was aliens like space come down? Space Invaders Plus, yeah, that right. was a big upgrade. In the in the future iterations of these games, where your your overhead view of the little spaceship and it's you know shooting the guns and then getting the power ups and the bad guys are coming down, what is really happening is that if you were to take the video game screen and zoom out and see beyond what the screen could show you, there are other objects outside of your field of view. Just above your little spaceship is a block with no graphic design object we can call it object a object a is the creation point where obstacles are, are are descending from and it moves around basically creating uh not necessarily creating but the way the way it worked in the games that I, at least as the games i made them if you were playing a game where your platform are running forward and and i would want to generate random enemies and obstacles there would be an object that moved up and down and then i would the code would say something to the effect of Every uh, you, you'd create a variable so that Dude. it could so that it would generate between I you know like between one and ten seconds, uh, you know at random, create object seventeen at y minus one object a, and what that means is that object that moves around is the point at which the game sh fires the the obstacle the enemy. So let's say you're you're playing Mario and a bird comes across the screen. There's something that's in front of you you can't see. Do you think that's happening in reality? Well, so I bring that up because that's a white hole. What, uh, the white holes you described it where matter is coming out of could just be a spawn point for matter that the simulation or God uses. I only question if it's random because they, we use that word random, but I don't I don't see any evidence that any of this is random. I mean, I, I can only assume that, well, like you said, Jimmy, we're talking about this primordial soup. That's not right. This isn't like, oops, we accidentally fell down and now we're humans talking about it. And the fact that we <laughs> have feelings, the fact that like, you know, it's like talking about like what we do matters. The fact that when you do something wrong, there's this weird feeling about it. And, and you can talk about what's wrong and you know that's debatable. But like the fact that there's feeling as well as something called love, we all like you can't prove that it exists, but like we all know it. Right. Does mm -hmm. it not exist? Yeah. What's yeah, that about? And people, like... let me just say people say that's like survival. Like, oh, well, you need it to like a companion, whatever. I'm like, eh. I don't know. I think that, you know, you could argue that love is almost like the, you know, it could destroy a lot of people in some yeah. ways. I don't know. What were you going to say? I didn't mean to cut you off. Like no, I, I, there's, there's a lot of life on this planet that doesn't have love. Yeah. Yeah. Trees, as far as we can tell, don't experience the same ex existence we do. In fact, when I look at a tree, I see uh, essentially the same thing as fire, a chemical reaction. Mm. Now you can make the argument that plants, of course, are not ensouled in the same way as humans are and humans are ensouled. And that's what creates everything you've described. I bet Perhaps. they are. They have circulatory systems. I, I, I got to tell you, though, like, you know, Seamus says that there's different kinds of souls and that that idea generally makes sense to me because there's no way that, you know, when I look at a dog, you can tell a dog's emotions. Oh, yeah. You know, that dog has n not the same, but similar feelings and emotions and expectations. Mm -hmm. And even even, you know, cats, yeah. cats are very different. They're more independent. But like I can. So this is the thing. Like Roberto Jr. died. He, he was uh, the, he was a rooster. We raised one of the first that we hatched. We got these original chickens. Roberto knocked them up. We didn't realize Roberto was a boy. We take a few of the eggs that are fertilized. We incubate them. They were a weak batch. Only one remains. Kind of sad. But Roberto Jr. has had kids. And I did not shed a tear for Roberto Jr. I am not that upset that he died. It's sad. It's like, oh, Roberto Jr. He was our dude. You know, he's the mascot for our coffee. But roosters don't have that emotional connection or actual like mammalian bond or whatever. I just, he's a rooster. He was funny. He looked at me. He, he, he you know, that's, that's it. Right. Mr. Bocus, our cat and the other dogs that we have here express love and affection in a way that is relatable and understandable to humans that humans feel. I bet if you trip balls on acid with Roberto, you would see his <laughs> eyes and you look in his eye for like an hour and you're just looking in his eyes dude, and you'd feel it. I don't, yeah. I don't agree. They're, it's they're wild, birds. Dude. Birds are it, like, they bang their kids. Even insects. Just, like Roberto's banging his daughters and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't, I yeah. don't feel any connection to these things. They're food. Yeah. They're, they, you know, I like them. I don't want them to be hurt. It's said when they die, I don't cry when they do. It's that when Bogus gets sick, I get worried and it, and it, and it hurts my feelings. It's yeah. that brain creature, like the brain 
brain brain stem that's floating in salt water that we all have even birds like <laughs> the reptilian brain right yeah, the stem. yeah it's the brain and the stem it's all one creature it looks like an octopus kind of like it it fell down into the ocean living in salt water and now it's like surround me with a sticky wet uh, meat sack to contain the salt water and i'll come out of the ocean and carry carry the salt water around with me but we're these like floating octopoid thing these weird things that are like tugging on muscle with electrical impulses and we all share that all the animals have uh, a brain i think every is that safe to say every animal has a brain no no oh no Don't jellyfish like flatworms so, so shrimp <laughs> once yeah. you start shrimp once you start getting into brain creatures that that's like I don't know if that's if we're if we're different like <laughs> whales got big brains yeah brain creatures is a cool one brain octopus <laughs> Yeah, like, their whole body is pretty much a brain yeah, that's connected uh -huh. to all, all eight tentacles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the problem, this interesting thing about alien life, uh, if, if alien life was, I think if we were ever to discover alien life that was traveling the stars, they would be very similar to us. Very similar. In fact, they'd probably breathe the same the same atmosphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason being, uh, uh, the, the octopi is a very intelligent creature, mm. super smart, ain't never going to smelt or create computers. Mm. Why? It's underwater. Mm -hmm. But what if it, it creates, what if we created a body that it can live inside of in salt water? No. What, what do you, well, what do you ask? Yeah. Uh, 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 could, so it, could it manipulate a, a body robot from inside? A, a robot. Like our brains do with right, our bodies. Right. So we create a, a robot with a water tank on top and the octopus is inside manipulating controls it's, and communicating in a way that it can translate to English and then we can actually interact but with it. But what you're doing when you say, can we put it into a body is you're saying, can we take this creature that has no reference of what a human experience is like right so we as humans can look at an octopus and understand that thing thinks differently to us yeah. because the experiences that we have sh have a significant impact on ourselves so if you took an octopus that has eight tentacles no spine all of these different things that to what we humans are the way that it experiences reality has to be totally alien to us. So if you put it into a human, like a robot with a human type of body, there's no reason to think that it would understand or even know what to do. And so like, like the idea of it being like, whoa, we'll just take the this brain and put it into the, the robot that we built like it was from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that like it wouldn't, there's no reason to think that it would understand or see things the way that we do. You know what I mean? The, the, the way that we experience in the world is very particular to human beings. Well, the monkeys, have you seen the monkeys working on computers? Like touch screens? Monkeys are totally different They're than so octopus. smart. But monkeys are totally different than octopus. Monkeys are bipedal. They have hands. They have faces. Octopus are totally different creatures i suppose then instead of saying put it in a body just build an interface for it so that it can somehow well, let us know that, I want, that I want. assumes that it could interface right right so hold on hold on ian what he's saying is you might you look at food you think oh that that piece of cake looks delicious the octopus might not even think in these terms that we can even understand well have you seen the octopus in tanks they'll see another fish in yep. another tank they want it they they search the tank they find a crack they slide up they move through they'll even climb out of water and climb and every, across the land and everything that it does is like an octopus mm -hmm. the point that i'm making is there is no human there's no reference for you to take an octopus put it into a situation that a human understands and think that the octopus could understand it a know, human well, being well, would never on. look like you could never but, be in a tank and then be like oh there's a crack in there i should try and shove myself through because you're a human <laughs> it doesn't come to you like that but, experience doesn't work but, but, but sound but, but, for with, instance with ai brute forcing a computer program could probably we're, I, I think we're, we're getting close to the point where an AI could figure out communications between other animals. Yeah, I see where you're going. And that's, that, that's crazy, right? That's reasonable. That's fine. So you, you think about how we have this AI rapidly learning and how it's creating all these images. Imagine if we just had, you know, when we do capture, here's the thing. The amount of data we give to AI is insane. We don't have that with, say, a fish or an octopus. We go on dating apps. We go on Twitter. We go on all these apps and we give our data up that are fed into this machine, this computer, which then rips through all the data and then figures out how to replicate and understand what a human is. Imagine if we made chat GPT, but it was based on all the sounds a dolphin made. And we just had uh, a bunch of supercomputers running through all the different sounds dolphins make, and then like making the sound and seeing how dolphins react over a long period of time, and then eventually deciphering dolphin communication. Oh, yeah. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you can actually make a dolphin translator mm -hmm. where you can 
and, and dolphins are intelligent. Yeah, but the thing is, so like, you could you could say like uh, we're going to throw in a, some fish if you want to move to the left, and then it goes. Yeah, and then the dolphins all go left, and then you throw the fish in. Wow. But the thing that so like this is one thing that I see with that we see with people all the time, right? So people will yell at their dog, and they expect their dog to understand them. That is stupid. Right. Because the dog, <laughs> right. you, because just like, like, so we, I, I say this when I talk about com, communism, you cannot make the, a, you cannot make the unable able. So you must make the able unable. You can't make a dog sm as smart as a human. So if you try to communicate with a dog like it's a human, uh -uh. that dog is going to be like, no, I don't understand. No, no, Unless no, no, it eats no, no, a bunch no, no, of mushrooms. I, I disagree. I disagree. Uh, we it don't can't speak. can't read. We don't speak dog. <laughs> but when a dog goes, you're like, dog is mad. When, when you dog, can understand the dog, the dog uh, can't uh, understand uh, you. you. The dog understands when you're mad, when you're happy, when you're laughing, when you're crying. It, so under, it, like, it understands like, tone. Like we understand when a dog is mad, but don't know what it's trying to convey outside of that. We, the dog can understand our emotions you can, as well. Fair enough. You can't, you can't articulate any kind of complex idea with a dog. But you can but, give it. But fair enough. Some dogs, well, let, you, they know their name for sure. That's not a complex idea. It's they complex can know hundreds idea. of words. True. Uh, True. But there's there's arguments in or science. an abstract idea. How about that? There, Maybe there's there's arguments that talking, they've actually displayed that. rudimentary math in dogs, and the response you you tend to get is no. The dogs are treating it like any other uh, stimuli response. Yeah. Whereas a human actually is going one, two, three, and understanding one, two, three. There are Creating three virtual and images in their brain. The dog is saying three because you said woof. The dog is just doing. If you say a, I say b. If you say one, I say two. The dog doesn't actually know how to calculate, but there are arguments that they've they've actually like some animals have actually done math. The counter is it's just a training response. That the ability to hold like an imaginary idea in your head and then add it to another imaginary idea and see them is like mathematics. You know these is that I don't know if that's from psychedelics. Like why do we have that and other species don't? I think our species evolved from apes that at some point broke off into a small community that was just dosing psychedelics as part of their their daily life like we have cannabinoid receptors in our brains ready for the cannabis that cannabinoid i mean it is part of our evolution so at some point humans got really smart and i don't know why but psychedelics seems cooking like the food, most probably. obviously cooking is another big no, part cooking, of it no no cooking meat is why mm -hmm. because the the calorie content yeah. it, it, when you cook meat it makes it easier to digest and so you can get more calories. Yep. So that makes the, that made uh, primates capable of building bigger brains because you got more calorie calories out of eating. Throwing, I think also, there's a huge explosion of development after people figured out how to throw because mm -hmm. they could start hunting. Yeah, but that, I, I, I would assume that that makes sense. Hunting I, I and cooking. Know. Yeah, the cooking is cooking was directly related to calorie intake because right. cooking me makes your body break down the, the food better. And so you can get more calories out of the food that you are eat. you sure that they were not cooking psilocybin mushrooms with their meat? Yeah, there's no or way to know. Side. <laughs> what's, what's, <laughs> and I said a sauteed psilocybin I sauteed mushroom. Amanita muscaria. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't there, so I can't say that I'm sure uh, it's a stoned ape theory. It was um. What's his name came up with? Yeah, Stamet. Terrence McKenna. Oh, Terrence McKenna. Who'd yes. you say? Who? Uh, Paul Stamets. He does. Oh, uh, the great guy. Have you worked with Stamets before? No, I've just I've seen his work. World leading mycologist. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend. Yeah, man. I, Mushrooms are aliens, right? Yeah. Spores. Hey, the speaking of it octopus, you should look in the, Google octopus. They think they may have arrived here on comets because they are like no other creature anywhere else on Earth with their origin. Uh, Google yeah octopus comets or something. There's it's the one animal that's completely. And mysteriously, like as far as like the whole topic of um, of uh, evolution, it's outside that parameters. Is that what that article is saying? Yeah, it says they're aliens, and it's giving <laughs> a bunch of different reasons why it says so. What year? Cos powers. Cosmic powers. Whoa, that comes out of nowhere. This one says no. Lies. I'm sold Don't now. Cosmic yeah, powers. So let, me, let me read it. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Between 2008 and 2010, Paul the Octopus was regularly asked to pick the winners of FIFA games. Right. Out of 14 predictions, he was correct 12 times. Mm -hmm. oh, there wow. You go. Aliens. Yeah, this, that's this, that's, alien. that's, when they swim, this their hearts stop beating. Yeah. Uh, when they're threatened, they'll release ink. Let's see if uh, if it's caught by a predator, it is able to escape by losing its arm. They're yeah. extremely strong beak-like jaws and venomous saliva. The females lay one hundred thousand eggs. Will guard their eggs until they hatch, during which time they rarely eat. At the end of their reproductive cycle, yeah. Have you seen babies? They're like super tiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very very small. You know what else they'll do? So if you put an octopus in with a jar with food in it, over time, it'll figure out how to unscrew the jar. Yeah. But if you have an other octopus watching it, it It'll will learn. figure it out yeah. the first time it watches it and immediately will go open up that jar. It learns. Which is yeah. wild. So they have memory recognition. Yes. That's why I think they can learn language. 
you know, if you want, if you really want it, like I'll never, so I've eaten octopus. It's been years. I'll never, it's delicious. I'll never eat it again because watch videos, go on YouTube and watch anyone listening, go watch octopus show gratitude for when people have saved them and oh, tell yeah. me that that octopus is not grateful. I yeah, could never sure. eat again. It's too conscious. Dude, it's too smart. Eight brains. They have eight brains. Well, is that right? well, yes, and so the brain. It's one brain, but it's connected through the, all eight tentacles. So it, it, most of its body is a brain, right. and that's how it can operate that's hundreds of its suction cups right. individually at each individual time simultaneously to be able to go through one of the small little crevices or cracks and you know a side of a boat and get its way off. Shout out to Octo Nation, by the way. If you don't follow him on Instagram, it's a great follow if you like octopuses. And why is it not octopi? I don't, I, this is just like it touches his foot though. It don't, cool you know, still. it loves us. <laughs> the gratitude of an octopus. Yeah, I mean, the thing is like the, as far as like animals go, like a horse can show you gratitude. super freaking cool. They man. are really cool, but I mean, yeah. a horse can show you gratitude for feeding animals. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh yeah. And especially pack animals. They definitely have like, it's a, a biological, uh, it's, it's going to help them survive. They can show gratitude and show you that, Hey, like I, I realized you did this for me. Like I'll do the same for you in the future. So it's like, right. you know, but it's true. It's reciprocity. That's the word I'm looking for. Yes. But yeah, octopuses are cool. I don't really like to eat calamari because of that fact. <laughs> it's just not really. Well, calamari is squid though. Yeah, that's true. Squid not very similar though. No, it's not, but I mean, a squid's enough. probably not as smart. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, yeah. What an animal! They're just a giant brain. I mean, not just a giant brain. I don't know. That's silly. Huge brain <laughs> matter, floating brain kind of thing. Yeah. We're gonna go to super chats. So if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, and become a member by going to timcast.com, clicking join us to support our work directly. And with that amazing membership you provide us, we're going to make documentaries. We're going to launch new shows. We're <clears throat> opening up a coffee shop. You can also download the Timcast app from the Google Play Store. Get it now. The Apple uh, Store app will be coming out soon. We're just waiting for their approval. All right. Where are we at with these super chats? Oh, okay. What do we got? Steve Sanders says, I've mentioned before I was arrested due to a mask mandate. In the state of Florida on public property, with the mask mandates returning, should I stand my ground or put on the mask? Or my arrest was three hours in handcuffs, four and a half in county jail for not wearing a mask in Florida? Whoa, that's crazy. DeSantis. Look, man, I just got to tell you, you know, I don't guy? know. Stay away from these communist cities and <laughs> move to Martinsburg, West Virginia. Yeah. Bring Martinsburg. based individuals who believe in America to Martinsburg, West Virginia. Uh, yeah, I want to inspire you to to make the, I, it's, it's just hard for me to think, like, tell someone to do something that might get them arrested. I, right. I, I'm not comfortable doing that. I'm telling you I would what I would do. And hopefully that inspires you to do it. But I don't want to be like, I'm going to go do the thing that's illegal and get like, I don't even want it to become a thing. So I'm not going to tell you I'm going to defy it because it's not a thing. Go where you are welcome. That was something like Jesus said something, something to that effect that when you're at a place that is completely ostracizing you, you want go, go elsewhere. So go like we we're talking about sheriffs earlier, go mm -hmm. to a county that yeah. has a constitutional sheriff because the amount of power they have is actually incredible compared yeah. to like some municipal. It's people need to look into this, look into constitutional sheriffs. Yeah. Sheriffs are super important. Like you, you should know who your sheriff is, at least know who they are. Um, and a lot of sheriffs are, are, uh, elected. So the, vo the fact that they have to be voted into office to get the position, uh, means that they tend to be more, uh, they'll listen to their constituents, uh, more than a police officer would, or a, a police chief would, because a police chief is going to be like, yo, I have to listen to the mayor. A sheriff has to run and I'll get elected again. Or not, not always, but some sheriffs do. Do something, do anything with a correction saying Poseidon is the underwater nuke. Satan too is just their newest Merv. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, but I have a correction for you. It's M-I-R-V, not M-E-R-V. <laughs> Multiple independently targeted reentry vehicle. Interesting that you chose the name Poseidon because that's said to be the first king of Atlantis. Poseidon. Interesting. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. More, what, what was his name? Atlas? Atlas. King Atlas. Yes. Yeah, king Atlas. And then they called him, the Greeks called him Poseidon or something? Yeah, so I meant to say Atlas was the very first king, but... Uh, Atlantis itself was created by Poseidon, and Poseidon went on to have oh, uh, yeah, five sets of twins, all sons, and the very first born was named Atlas that founded the Oh, first so Poseidon kind of brought it together, but then Atlas was like the, 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 the Alexander Great that came along and like put it on the map, kind of, and named it after himself and everything. So have, right. there, have there been no uh, 
like excavations of the was it called the Rikat structure? The, the Rishat structure, Rishat. commonly referred to as the Eye of the Sahara. There has been no legitimate archaeological study. The Mauritanian government won't allow digging there. There's gold. That's one of the reasons. I had a friend that went out there. Uh, let me give another shout out. Josh Sigurdsson, World Alternative Media. He went out there. This guy saw my video a few years ago and went to the Rishat structure. And also David Stig Hansen. They'll be so thrilled to to hear their name mentioned. Um, but no, like you can't even use ground radar. They'll threaten you under penalty of being put in prison. No. Yeah, mm. well, you know, there's there's gold in West Africa, and that's another site that makes it yeah. so fascinating is the amount of gold. So before the discovery of gold in the Americas, uh, Europe got a majority of their gold right. from Mauritania, really? which is wow. just wild because it's at the same site that matches a number of similarities so, to the lost city of Atlantis. Whoa, so, wow. so, so, we, old Atlantis so we need Vivek Ramaswamy to add to his campaign promises that he will send a <laughs> military incursion into the Reichstag structure <laughs> by force to discover the secret yes. of Atlantis. Yes. If people want to look, if, if there was, if that was indeed the site, and maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, I believe it's by far the, the most likely. And how if it how was, big is it? It's 16 miles across um, for the circular nature of it. Uh, it's even wider uh, if you go to like the full, full outer skirts. But um, if there was going to be any remnants, I mean, it's clear evidence that this site got bulldozed by the ocean tens of millions of years before scientifically known. Like anyone listening right now, I guarantee there's people, you know, saying like, well, Atlantis, what are you talking about? Backburn Atlantis for just a second. Look through the entire Western Sahara and you could tell textbook striations of catastrophic water erosion. Look at look at the, the eye of the Sahara from space and you could see these striations that go straight over it going from east to west out into the Atlantic Ocean. Now, if the if the Rishat was the site, you would want to look off the west coast of Africa into the ocean. If it plummets down like 10,000 feet extremely quickly. But the, the, in, the t in the context of climate change, when right now this is like one of the biggest topics, and it's gonna be something that's about to start ruling our lives. If you listen to what the powers that be are saying, it's all about gonna, it's gonna be the climate lockdowns, it's gonna be the 15 minute cities, they're saying they're gonna do it. So if they're gonna talk about rate of change, cause that's what it is, like we're not denying that the earth doesn't change. We're talking about the rate. The humans are changing the rate faster than ever before. Okay, so I have a question. It's a little, uh, most people are not aware that the Sahara Desert was green up until approximately 5,000 years ago. It had one of the largest networks of rivers, it had the largest freshwater lake ever known to exist on planet Earth, and, uh, and it was a green tropical paradise up until 5,000 years ago. Wow. The scientific studies, well, they say it's a 20 year, uh, 20,000 year cycle and there is tilt, which raises all kinds of questions. Cause it's like, okay, well, where are we in this tilt now? Uh, it, it, where's that coming to the equation of rate of change? Also the scientific studies will say that between 11,000 and 5,000 years ago, so a over 6,000 years is approximately when it changed. I'll show you other studies that are published that say somewhere, but like you look up a Smithsonian article between 8,500 and 4,500 years ago. So that's a 4,000 year window. Other ones will say between 6,000 and 5,000 years. And another one will say in less than hundred years. And the point that I'm making here is that if they can't articulate the rate of change that the Sahara Desert went from, and, and we're talking about a region the size of the contiguous United States, and if they're ballparking it between, you know, up to 6,000 years, then it is quite literally not possible for them to definitively say that we are now changing the rate of our climate faster than ever before if they can't even articulate what happened to the Sahara and how fast. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the people are full sure. of crap is what I'm trying to say. I, mean, <laughs> I think that the, the Grand Canyon was carved out by a massive flood. It, personally it, anyone that's flown over it i mean i'm telling you and they'll say that's not the case uh that it happened over millions of years but i'm like okay well there's many uh massive rivers that are found all over the world that are so the grand canyon is something like five to six uh, million years old while the nile river is like 30 million years uh the the uh, mississippi is almost 70 million years and you can talk about downhill you can talk about changes of elevation but the reality is that if you look at pictures of it it's quite shallow in comparison um this is pseudo by the way like i guarantee you that some scientists listening is like we don't know what i'm talking about fine um um, but the reality is this, is that there is evidence of catastrophic erosion that that in like what I was mes mes uh, mentioning scriptures earlier, they talk about a deluge. There's there's more than there's hundreds of cultures around five continents around the world that talk about a flood. Yeah. And now they have the scientific evidence that there was a massive uh, 400 foot rise in sea levels at the end of the last ice age. And they don't know why it happened so quickly. Hmm. Where are you going to ask him? No, I'm going to go on with super chats. Oh, please do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe we'll, we'll come back to that. Sultry Cedar says our cat Pearl has ear polyps causing her chronic bacterial and yeast infections. She has to have surgery to remove them. We started to go fund me for it. It's rescued kitty needs ear surgery. Will you please give it a shout out? My only request in the future is to use give, send, go and not go fund me because go fund me is a bunch of woke garbage. Yeah. But uh, I, I absolutely will shout it out because I hope the best for young kitty Pearl. That's awesome. Yeah. You got we want to make Pearl. sure Pearl makes it. Good job. 
Amasong says America is truly becoming a new Atlantis. Our world changing accomplishments accomplishments have made us both proud and decadent. We are due for a very hard fall. Dude, I'm writing. I've got a screenplay that's like half written about the lost city of Atlantis. Because in my screenplay, the idea is that they're hoarding information on the island and the flood wipes it all out and it's all lost. Except some of them escape with agriculture, with some architecture. Mm. They flee to Turkey. You know, I, I maybe I just spoiled the end, but at the end of the movie, you know, the well, hero. Atlantis was the site of the space colony when Earth was being terraformed and colonized by the human travelers from far away, <laughs> and they were like, "This planet, Earth, th- th- third from the sun, looks like a good place to set up a colony." And then they did, and uh, you know, it got washed away. We and should then, we should we pull done. up the Rakat structure and image because we've been well, talking we're, about we're it. Well, we're in super chat, so I'm gonna yeah, just I want to show the uh, there's a there's a dig right next to it that looks so man made. I mean, everything about that place looks like historically man the only thing more worked. wild than the wrist shot structure itself is the fact that so few people have ever seen or heard of it before I, I encourage people right now to google eye of the sahara under google images look at it you'll see satellite images of it and tell me ask yourself why have i never seen or heard of this before and go to google maps you can scroll in and out to get a perspective on where it is and like how it played in the the old in the old history it's wild all right Polly Puree says Maine is said to be the safest state in the USA in the event of a nuclear attack, according to the U.S. government. No military, no bomb storage, nothing there but lobsters, forest, and dog parks. The lobster, dude. I was just there last week. And, wow. Shane Cashman went lobstering, wrote an article about it, and then they had just like this little bowl of fresh lobster, and you just pick it up and eat it, and it tastes amazing. Lobster's who, one I never would have thought, uh, you know, who would have thought uh, ocean spider. <laughs> they so good. Dave, yeah, they used to be called considered pests, didn't yep. they? Like yeah. disgusting yeah. and yeah. yeah. Used to be the food of poor people and there were so many of them so they, you could just go find them off of the, you know, off the shore and go get a bunch and make good it protein. It tastes so good. Yeah. You dip it in yeah. butter? Oh, it's, it's the wild. best. Lobster roll? Mm. Dude, the lobster rolls are so good. Yep. I can't believe that there was a time where people were like, this is awful. It's like, it's like chicken. I guess they're, if they're, you had it every day. <laughs> no, I, dude, I eat chicken every day. I love it. The lobster I eat lobster rolls. every day, no problem. The lobster rolls with the uh, butter, when it's just the, the uh, lobster meat and no mayonnaise and stuff, which is butter on a, t- a toasted bun is oh, outstanding. Yeah. Fenway. Awesome. Man, do, the, do they know that we're talking about them like this? The lobster. The lobster. <laughs> <laughs> they're not as smart as the octopus. We so want to saying. eat you. <laughs> <This is> so <laughs> delicious. <laughs> There's aliens being like, oh, human, when it's perfectly aged, I love to consume them. (laughs) All right, where are we at? What do we got? Matthew Lay says, I bought dehydrated toilet paper sheets to add to our bug out bags. That's smart. So they're like super compressed. Then you put a little water on it and it goes and like expands. Right on. Lucas White says, the Lord is coming back for his church bride. You can know you're going to heaven. Praise the Lord for saving blood of his only son jesus christ get saved before the rapture yeah i love this idea one of the things i really like about the idea of christ coming back or that the judgment is that the people that claim to be christian or claim to be jewish that don't believe in god or claim to be muslim that don't believe in god they're gonna face like it's not like i don't want you to think that horror is coming on to you just don't don't fake it this don't, is the part you like yeah because it's the like I, I like stuff. retribution i'm a big fan of 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 bad people getting their come up justice yeah you're always talking about pardoning hillary clinton i know but deep he down to, he wants to pardon people in real life but throwing them into eternal hellfire man that is perfectly fine I, you I, have I, no I, idea oh, i agree if ian's position is that hillary clinton for all of the awful things she's done will be pardoned so we can move forward as people here on earth but she will burn for eternity. I'm like, okay. Well, yeah, I'm not now. here to judge your soul, but your <laughs> actions. Yeah, that's a different story. Um, but I, I, I thought fascinating. So many people that are faux religion that say just because they went to church, now they're a Christian, but they don't even fathom what like being is. They think of it as like a thing out there when it's like it's a feeling, you know. God, it's so I, I look forward to that reckoning when people start to Every, really truly believe in God. Everyone is basically saying that Hillary Clinton burning for eternity is a twenty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> fair. I'm cool with that. Fair. Burning for eternity. You know, that's the thing, though. It's like you know, God will God will judge. You know. Look, man, I'm I'm all for forgiveness. She doesn't have to burn for eternity. She can just burn for like you know ninety percent of thousand thirty three thousand yeah, years. That's we'll the that. thing for right? all the emails. One year for every email. There you I'm go. I'm watching. Yeah. Uh, I'm watching that show, The Uncanny Counter. Have you guys heard of it? Uh-uh. It's a no. Korean show where basically evil spirits can escape and then possess people and they commit murders. Hmm. And so people in the afterlife are tasked with empowering humans to go capture them. And then like, you know, I'm watching it and it's kind of crazy, this idea of eternal damnation, where it's like you do one bad thing that crosses the line. And then when you die, you're going to burn 
forever. And I'm like, that's kind of messed up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It seems extreme. It Forever's a long time, man. Forever's yeah. a long time. And like, so the uh, the story right now, spoiler alert for those that are watching it, uh, you've been warned, on Netflix, is that there's this good guy, he's a firefighter, and he saves one of the character's family members, and they're like, he's a hero, and we love him. But then his wife gets murdered, and he turns, he, he starts getting anger-filled and dark. He tries to get revenge, and then because of his blind rage and lust for vengeance, he gets possessed by an evil spirit and becomes evil. But he doesn't want to hurt. He, he's, it, it's interesting because his arc is... I actually kind of agree with him to a certain extent. He's a character who's like, there's a group of people who have defrauded the working class and killed people and, and causing all the suffering that have to have, they have to be stopped. But he's doing it in such a way where it's like torturous and evil. He's like grabbing, hunting this criminal down, like breaking him out of jail, like breaking into jail, like kill him or whatever. The good guys are trying to stop him. And it's an interesting thought that a guy who dedicated his whole life to being good has his wife murdered and then he... He, he, the, the, the guys who get are getting away with it. So he goes for, for revenge and that condemns him to an eternity of damnation. You know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a brutal thing to think. It is. And you know, here's something interesting is that in the Bible, it only, it never actually uses the word hell. It uses the word Gehenna and Gehenna mm. is the burn pit. So if like in the mid East where they don't have, um, um, trash and sanitation systems. So like I was in Iraq, uh, as some of my following will know, and in these Middle Eastern countries, they have the burn pit on the outskirts and anything that you can't burn inside your home to heat your food or, 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 or warm the, the household, they burn like plastic and other things. And so other, some, another gentleman explained this to me. He's like, what if hell, when it says, you know, you're going to burn in the fires, he's like, you're just going to be discarded. Right. And then, and then it's like the fear of Not missing cherished. out thing where it's like everyone else goes on and they do a reincarnation. They being born and born and born again. Cause I tell you what, if I could do this again, I'll do it. There's some hard times. Right. But I'm like, I, life is man, it's something. Right. And so, but everyone else. They're just discarded. They're, they they have to sit and watch and do nothing, and they don't get this human interaction. They don't get the feeling and all the other wonderful things that come with it. I got another. Uh, it's not really a conspiracy theory. It's one of these. It, it's funny when they call like flat Earth a conspiracy theory because it's like just thinking the Earth is flat is not a conspiracy <laughs> among criminals. Just but, a theory. But uh, there's an idea that there's a finite number of souls, mm. and there are less souls than there are people right now, and that's why you have so many NPC mindless people. Because I've heard that before. there's a billion souls, yeah. but eight billion bodies. I feel like, uh, like the devil, or like I guess I would say Satan. You know, ball. They have all these demons from the Bible, or from King David. Had this talk about the demons. I think they were princes and dukes and kings that fought a war against another side. Maybe it was Michael and the archangels were part of it. And there was a war in the Bible. There's a war, and then they lost. And the victors wrote the history book, which is the the Old Testament. And they were like, where they lived. That's hell. That's burning fire because they probably torched the entire land after they won the war. And they're like, you don't want to go to the old burn hell place. Mm -hmm. There, it's all, and they're all yeah. demons. They demonized the losers. That word actually exists. Demonize and these de to these demon. So, like, I just think it was a war. Let's uh, let's read this. Eve Welcome says, Jimmy, look into the Maunder and Dalton solar minimum minimums, as mm -hmm. well as the Minoan warm period. Each grand solar maximum is followed by a grand solar minimum. Right. There's yeah. people out there saying that that's exactly what's going on. There's people that are right. studying this. There's a gentleman named Ben Davison that's gone down the rabbit hole of studying this for a long time. And, like you know, the, honestly, the it's the sun cycle. The sun. Yeah. And so, like, let me just say this. So Donald Trump, back when he was president, he spoke about this. It's only 30 seconds long. And he says, it is in the context of climate change. And he said, oh, it's going to cool first. Wait, you just wait, you see. And a lot of people don't realize that we're still in the middle of an ice age yeah. and that there's interglacial periods within them and that the data shows two things. One, that Earth is cold most of the time. And also that if you look at the graph, you could argue that, yeah, maybe we'll warm before it gets cold again. But based on where we're at versus historical times, it's going to get cold again because there's been in the last 450,000 years that they're aware of, there's been five interglacial periods, which means times that the glaciers receded because it warmed up. But that means that there's been five times where there was this place was covered in glaciers. Yeah. We should be grateful. What's a good place to find um, data or evidence that we're still in the Ice Age? Just off the top of your head, do you have a, a place that you can point to? I know, I think Utah State University was talking about it. We're at the end of, but because the comets wiped out so much of the ice uh, 12,000 years ago, it looks like we're not really in one, but we're still in one just without the ice, which is very strange. So that's a good question. I got a million screenshots that I brought with me of different studies that show this stuff. Like, so here's one example. Uh, no, that's not the one I'm looking for. I'd have to look. Uh, I'll I, ask I, you after the show. Maybe you can send it to me. Or absolutely. Something. I'll read this one from Alpha Wolf. He says, Ian. The God energy is due to return. Yes, it is. Catholic saints and converts are on the rise. Jean, is it Jean D'Arc? Jean yeah, Jean uh, Deus Wolt, I believe. Deus Wolt, yeah. I, uh, Wolt. 
Oh. I honestly believe the fourth crusades are inevitable. Yo. Yeah, the V and the Ws are inverted. Oh, okay. In no. Deus, Walt. Deus, Walt, which, what does that mean? God wills it. God wills it. That was the, the crusaders would call that out, I believe. Yeah. Um, what a crazy thing. Allah. And God, that was the that was the universe, right? Yeah, it's, it's, God wills it. It's inshallah. Right. Inshallah. 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 But so, like the, the Crusaders thing. and the the Muslims were screaming the same thing, and yeah. right, Allahu Akbar, and yep. it's useful. It's, God is great. That's the thing about the, the thing about uh, Alu Akbar. You see these videos where like a like a, the warehouse explodes or whatever, and they're mm. all yelling that, yeah. and people don't realize they're just going, "Oh my God!" Yeah. yeah. Oh exactly. my God! Right. Yeah. Right. So like, if you speak the language, you realize they're not literally like praising God. Yeah, it's not a celebration. Yeah. No. <laughs> all right, where are we at? My brainer says the Catholics don't believe we are living in the end times because theology isn't based on in colloquial speech and they don't listen to false prophets. Woo, spicy. Yeah. It's Where's Seamus when you need him? Seamus. Yeah. He abandoned us. Seamus I came just, back from uh, Tijuana. He was just gone. He was, he was, he was stressed out from the week of hosting the show, I guess. He, had he was enough. offended by the uh, the spoon accusation. Vacation. <laughs> he, <laughs> wanted, he wanted to get away so he could get away with the spoons. He had to hide. Well, the, the, yeah. the, I, got, I got to tell you, the thing about Seamus is that he starts the jokes <laughs> and then goes, oh, well, I, I never like the Irish thing. <laughs> yeah. He's the one making the jokes about being yeah. Irish and mm -hmm. like he brought Lucky Charms in here <laughs> to do a joke where he's wearing a leprechaun hat and eating Lucky Charms. He's the and then best. when we go along with it, he's like, oh, well, how dare you? He's so funny. <laughs> yeah. What's a seven course Irish meal? Beer. Mm. A six pack and a baked potato. There you go. Seven <laughs> I'm Irish. I can say it. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the bit was, uh, this, is, this is a true story. I'm sitting in the living room, which is like, we, it's called the great room. It's not really a living room. It's like just where the kitchen and the mail room is. But there's a couch and a TV and uh, Leprechaun was on. And it's the one where the guy gets bitten by the Leprechaun and starts <laughs> turning Irish. <laughs> and so it's at the scene where the dude's in a restaurant and he orders a bunch of different kinds of potatoes. <laughs> and Seamus walks in. He's like, what's going on, buddy? What are you watching? And then he looks at the TV and he goes, what is this racist <laughs> crap? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, he didn't say, oh, my God. Was, yeah. And then it's like, because the guy's literally like growing mutton chops. And he's like, I want French fries, mashed potatoes, a baked potato, <laughs> waffle fries, curly fries. <laughs> and then he's got all these potatoes. He's just eating them. And Seamus is like, what is this? I mean, look, the Irish are right. Potatoes are great. They're honestly. amazing. They're, they're, awesome. not even, they're not even uh, uh, indigenous to Ireland. No, not at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were brought there. The Colombian Exchange. Yeah, is that what it was? Oh. Yeah. yeah, there's tons of them down in South America. It's like they have like 2,000 different species. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Or different you know, types, what, yeah. You know yeah. what's awesome is yuca. It is amazing. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I had it, I was when I moved to New York and they've got all of these like Caribbean Dominican restaurants mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I went to this place and they had fried yuca. And I'm like, what's that? And they're like, we'll make you some. Yeah. And I'm like, is this like a French fry? It's delicious. Freaking so good. Yeah. Boil yeah. it, put it with eggs, man. Boil it, it is and good then with fry everything. It is. You know what you I can make really, it sweet. I got to tell you. I don't know if it's it's up your alley, but mangu is one of the best breakfasts ever. Never Have you ever had it? it? No. It's boiled mashed plantains mm. with pickled onions, fried salami, like thick cut <laughs> fried salami and fried cheese. And that's all I had for breakfast for like two years straight living in Brooklyn. <laughs> wow. Dude, this, it is, sounds delicious. this is very similar to what I was just talking about what I would eat the yucca and eggs in Brooklyn when I would go to work when I was me and mine's were, we were setting up our mangu, office. dude. It, it's got a name for it. What's the name? Mongo, Dominican traditional. It, there's like a name for it. It's called the three hits or something in Spanish. Oh. Bro, I love mongo. It's so awesome. Boiled mashed plantains. Plantains are good, so good. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say plantains are probably my like the best thing from the Colombian exchange. Maybe bananas. Merle Gray says the greatest act of love God ever gave us was giving us the ability to choose. Yes. Yep. Paul Tascalo says leaders must navigate the fear love matrix. Donald Trump is the ultimate leader. He wants to be loved by his people. And his enemies naturally fear him because of his unpredictability. Fearing a man that wants your love forces peace. Hmm. Yeah. What do we got? Ward Spo says Phil gets a doctorate in astrophysics from Timcast University. <laughs> the real Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I, I deserve no doctorates. I uh, just read a lot of stuff. Would you that. accept an honorary doctorate? I wouldn't. I know because because i don't in any on, way man. what about a, that. hold on Come what about on. an honor honorary doctorate in rock okay there you go dr <laughs> rock Labonte. dr rock Labonte. Rock, doc, rock, Lab rock doctor <laughs> yeah i mean but are there like do are there like music universities that give out the equivalent of that um i i don't think so but i just, i imagine that it's possible i mean if harvard can give out honorary yeah. stuff then you know then music we should make one good that'd be cool yeah, we right. should. Uh, I actually, we were we were thinking we, like we should we should do some kind of awards. Oh, you cool. know, that's yeah. not that's actually a really good idea to do uh, 
get together with other either streams or other people in the conservative and and libertarian, whatever, libertarian kind of area and and you know select people in this kind of like the streamies but right. like not for you know crackpots dudes that think they're women <laughs> we should be actually maybe maybe the uh maybe the thing is like other kind of people culture cult, culture the, a culture war themed thing where it's yeah. like there can be great works in 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 um anti-establishment work of art like Richmond North the Richmond side of freedom yeah and this allows us to highlight you know how many movies came out this year that had a good message we would probably like from a studio that was rejecting Hollywood I I I'd, I'd, I'd reason there's probably a lot maybe even hundreds and you can it might also inspire other people to try and I, do more I'm just saying oh, that you know? I think this would be highly effective like uh, certain employers rarely do uh uh, few and far between would do like employee of the month, but there's something about that. There are some people like that that acknowledgement, that attaboy, so to speak. By doing something like that, you could you could possibly cause a chain reaction of other people because now more than ever, people need to speak up, right? People mm -hmm. need to be encouraged and celebrated for saying what they believe to be true. We need it now more than ever. I I do like the issue I take with it is though is like the award shows are just typically really lowbrow. It's mm -hmm. like we're all sitting here and an arbitrary group of people have decided this is the one thing everyone knows about that we're going to we're going to say is better than everything else. And then it's like, I, I can't believe that I was picked to be the, to, the, the, the person. It's like, here's five movies. This one was better than the, the rest. So saith our wealthy panel. Yeah. You know and the, it's like the people that are making the decision are, are are very rarely actually aware and connected to what they're making decisions about in in the uh, broader that, award area. So so maybe there's some different way to approach a community based hey, check out these really awesome projects, and then a prize goes to somebody. Maybe it's not an award, but, you know. An acknowledgement mm. of some kind, Yeah, you know? It's a good idea. That'd be cool. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Noah Sanders says, Tim, space isn't an image here. It's DLC. That's why we couldn't unlock the rocket for space travel before we did, because the DLC wasn't finished before then. They're working <laughs> on the Mars DLC now. Perfect. Yeah, and there's frequent updates, too. You just don't realize it. It's like whenever new technology gets released, it's actually just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, um, it's a patch. Yeah, they just patched the just game. New patch. <laughs> new <yeah>. patch. Yeah. <laughs> Would you guys pay Elon Musk seven ninety nine to get the uh, the Mars upgrade, the Mars uh, expansion? Yeah. yeah. Are you, you saying you that pay what... X and he unlocks Mars for you? I I for space travel. Okay, hold, let me. Money? I, I will say right now, if Elon Musk went on, you know, made a video and says, "Everyone, uh, we want to build Starship and go to Mars, and if you'd like that to happen." Then you can sign up to become a member for seven ninety nine per month, and that money will go directly to uh, building Starship and uh, building a Mars base. I'd be like, I'll sign up twice. Yeah. Absolutely. Like let I want to see. Let me know when you unlock the fast travel feature. And, yeah. Because three years in a spaceship doesn't sound all that great, but when I can travel there, I just you know spawn point. magnetic yeah. slingshots. All right, everybody. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, head over to timcast.com and become a member to support our work directly. As a member, we use your money for a whole bunch of things, like we're building a coffee shop, we're launching a record label, we've got another music video coming out, we're launching a skate show, and we've got huge moves happening in skateboarding, and that's what your membership does. So we're building a skate park, we're building a skate shop, we're going to be doing skate videos, we've got pros that are coming out because we are putting our foot down in the culture wars, and we are going to push back on the creep of the woke cult into our creative spaces. And uh, we do other things like when we had uh, Tim Ballard here from uh, of Sound of Freedom fame, we uh, we uh, you and I together, the viewers of this show put forward twenty four thousand dollars and I matched that. We wrote our good friend a check for 50 grand. That's that's the point of everything we're working on. And as a member, you help make all of that possible. So join us at TimCast.com. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Jimmy, do you want to shout anything out? Yes. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to get that going. I'm very a uh, big supporter of it. It's Bright Insight 6, Jimmy Corsetti. Follow me on YouTube. My channel is called Bright Insight. And two other little things. I'm uh, going to be speaking at a conference, CPAC 2023. It's in Palm Springs on October 20th through 22nd. Uh, it will be uh, with me, Graham Hancock, Christopher Dunn, Robert Edward Grant, and a number of other fascinating people. Uh, so go check that out. And also, big announcement. Rumble, I just signed a deal with them. I'm going to be doing four live streams with them a month. I just signed off on it. This starts here in September. I couldn't be more excited. Huge shout out to Claudio, Chris, and everyone else over there on the team. Ori, Vivian with Locals, uh, Siraj, and all of you. Thank you so much. And hey, to anyone that's listened to me, like I've been biting my tongue for a long, long time. I'm more than, uh, there's a lot of things in my mind that go beyond the ancients, and it's time to speak up. Uh, 
you know, our, our constitutional <clears throat> republic is at risk. They stole the election. I'm just going to say that. Carrie Lake won. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, I'd love to meet you. You are, you know, so you're the guy and uh, I keep it real. So that's how you know. I just want to <laughs> shout out Rumble. There's one simple thing you can you can check to, to know that Rumble is legit and based AF. And it's just go follow Siraj on Twitter. Hash me? Sur Siraj Hajmi on Twitter. He's just the best. Follow yeah, he him. Because like, Habibi. if he worked for any big tech company, they'd have fired him so <laughs> yeah. quick. He's great. But Sir his Twitter is super so hilarious. Fun. Him anyway. and his, his buddy ass looking. That's <laughs> the one and only. Yeah. Phil. Uh, I am Phil Labonte. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm Phil That Remains. On Instagram, I'm Phil That Remains Official. Uh, the band is All That Remains. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, uh, uh, you know, the internet, YouTube, the whole nine. Amazon Music. I'm Ian Cross, and follow me at Ian Cross on anywhere on the internet, including X and Minds and YouTube. Subscribe to me there. Always a pleasure, Jimmy. If you guys ever want some help working, Graham's one of my heroes, man. Robert uh, Grant, brilliant mm -hmm. dude. Love the guy. I'd love to get involved with you guys and do some of this ancient stuff and get my mind you out of from time to time, you know? Also, Seamus Coughlin is in a live Twitter space right now as we speak. It's called Help. Seamus hijacked my space. He's speaking. So after we <laughs> shut this off, you go to X, you jump in that uh, in Seamus's space because I'm sure it's hilarious. <laughs> Seamus hijacked my space. <laughs> Talk me out, Serge. Uh, yeah. Um, I just want you guys, if you're thinking about or considering going to Miami to get your tickets, it's definitely going to be fun. It's going to be worth it. Um, I'm excited. It seems like it's going to be great. Um, I'm Serge.com all over the internet. Uh, yeah, let's argue. You know how I like to do that. All right, everybody. We have clips coming up throughout the weekend, and then we are not back on Monday. It's Labor Day, so y'all go enjoy life with your family. Chill out. We're going to be on the beach. We're going to have pizza and wings. It's going to be a beautiful three-day weekend. Thank you all so much for all your support and making all this possible, and we will see you all Tuesday.